Land, motherfucker. We replaced your regularly scheduled program to bring you this goddamn special ass episode of Uninformed on an old. Welcome to the Uninformed Mixtape, slut. I'm your host, Bernard Valentine, from the world's nastiest sex rap group, Deep, the Uninformed Mixtape on an old. Tonight we're going to bless that ass with some of Bill and Joe's greatest goddamn hits. And in addition to that bullshit, we're going to shove some brand new exclusive cuts right up your pee hole. Also tonight, a brand new discussion with a real live 5-0. That's right, we're going to pick the motherfucking brain of a motherfucking ex-cop. Fuck you. On the floor. The Uninformed Mixtape, tonight, right now. This episode has been pre-recorded, so that means don't try calling in, you stupid asshole. If you got some shit to say, email it to uninformedradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Hey, yo, enough fucking around. Let's start this shit. Here's a brand new, hot off the press discussion between Bill and Joe on an four. I could not sleep last night, man. I knew we had to get up today. I know, dude. You look like shit. To do this, because you know, because you know, you know, we're out every night doing shows till late. So to get up at ten a.m. We're out there on the circuit. <laughs> to get up at ten a.m. to be in here by twelve to do like this pre-recorded episode, I was like, all right, I, I'm going to go right home after my spots, and you know, and go right to bed at like three a.m. and try to get six or seven hours of sleep. I'm trying to be responsible. Yeah, and I just I didn't drink. I just went right home. And dude, I just lay. I was just laying in my bed till 7 a.m. I could not sleep. I tried reading for a while. I didn't fall asleep. I'm reading That's the worst. And I'm reading Wicked, which <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that like, sounds that, like something uh, a, a divorced woman would read on a I beach. Know, that's exactly in the middle of summer. <laughs> It's that book they based that musical on, the, about the Witches of Oz, where, you know, the posters, it's like, it's like Wicked, a new musical about the Witches of Oz. Can I tell you something? I don't know what one of those fucking musicals about <laughs> Chicago, Oklahoma, any of them. It's just a bunch of people in, uh, bunch and the, of, uh, people in frilly dresses over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah just singing songs. Of, uh, fruits over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they uh and the the slogan on the poster it shows the you know it shows the two witches from the Wizard of Oz and then it, and then the slogan is a whole lot happened before Dorothy dropped in you know it's, it's real sassy oh my God. so I'm reading that book right now so why I just, do you have that book first of all my roommate had it she had it and I was like I'm gonna read she this. had it or yeah, he had she, it she she oh, okay. she so I wanted to read it so I was laying there reading that sober. And just feeling like just like such a fucking like fruity douche, just curled up in my bed trying to fall asleep. So then, I, are you wearing pajamas? Yeah, and a sports yeah. bra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wearing sweats rolled up at the waist. Those stupid slippers with like an animal. I tell you, when you, you hook up with a girl and she has like that that still sh- like stuffed animals and crap on her bed, I've always found that just a, it's so, it's weird. It's pedoph- Pedophile is in the air when that shit happens. It's weird. Like, I kind of hate it, but I kind of think it's cute and, like, comforting a little bit. Like, I feel good. Like, I'm like, all right, this chick's at least not a skank. You know? She's not like the chick. That's all a girl needs? Yeah, that's it. To convince you that she never let anybody go raw in her, his little stuffed bunny? That's it. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know. I usually look at the bookshelf. I look at some of the books that they had. Sometimes I get creeped out, though, if they have... If the books are too like sort of intellectual or whatever, you know what I mean. It freaks me out a little bit. Not oh, that. Oh no, Joe. That means she wants it in the ass. <laughs> that's what I mean. I feel she's like got that's too somebody... much power at work. Just push her face right into the pillow. <laughs> so, uh, I, I hooked up with a girl one time, and I was looking up, and she had one book up there. I swear to God, the name of the book was uh, "They Said It Wasn't Rape." <laughs> and I was literally waiting for the first time I touched this girl for her to just be curled up in a ball like with a purple crayon just drawing on the sheet or something you know I was just like no it made me like nervous like thinking like what happened to this girl and I don't want to have some sort of rape Vietnam flashback Jesus Christ yeah. and I go to put my hand up her shirt there <laughs> did you ask her what the book was about no, I, you know what? I waited to the second or third time, and um, yeah, she was just more like into like she went through a woman's movement kind of uh, phase. So then, of course, I trashed her. Dude, I I hooked up with this girl the other night, and um, 
Was she hot? She yeah, she was pretty hot, but she had like a I I was taking her shirt up and she had like a stretch mark on her stomach and she was like, I'm kind of embarrassed. She was in her thirties and she goes, I had a baby when I was seventeen, so I have some stretch marks and I was I just let it go. I didn't ask any questions. I was so afraid to ask. Well, what happened? Like, is the did you get it? Yeah. What do you do? What do you not get stretch marks when you're in your thirties and you have a baby? Well, no. I'm saying she was she was just like I had a baby when I was seventeen, and that was all she said. And I was so afraid to ask her. Well, do you still have it? Or like, I was afraid she'd be like, I gave him up for adoption. Not a day goes by. Oh. <laughs> you know, I tried to hide the pregnancy. <laughs> I had the baby in the toilet. Do you remember that story in the post? That was me. Yeah, dude. It I was, was so... me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking scared, dude. That's what it's all about for me anymore, though. Is bringing out the depression in a woman when I when I oh, when I try to fuck her. That's he try, yeah. He try to take him down. I have a new joke in my act where I say, after I fuck a girl, I want her to get up from my bed and walk directly to the window and jump out of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Joe. <laughs> Jesus. I want to just bring out all the pain. I want it to be very therapeutic. I go. I just try to. Uh, I try to. What I do is I I try to uh, get them get them to talk about sex. I go really hacky. I try to. Draw out the whore within, like their inner whore. You know what I mean? You ever yeah. try that? You ever try that? You basically, it's the old thing. You kind of admit, you know, when you start talking about sexual fantasies, you just admit to something that you want to do that is just so far down the road that anything that she was actually thinking of admitting will pale in comparison. And then she'll admit like her whore shit. Yeah, because... that, that this is this is all in theory. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of like shooting a pilot, Joe. You know, it's... you don't know if it's going to get picked up or not. But you know, <laughs> everybody's got a good feeling about the script. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to get into the uh, sexual discussion sometimes. You know, sometimes the jump is too is too drastic from what you're actually talking about. You're trying to work it in, and she oh, keeps talking about you recipes force it, and that's shit. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> you're trying to. You're trying to ease your way into some kind of ass sex discussion, and it's fucking impossible half the time. <laughs> I, you know what's I, funny is I have no idea how I do it. I was just trying to think. Maybe because I've been in a well, fucking some, relationship too long. I sometimes remember. you pull it off, and the transition is seamless. And all of a sudden, she's sitting there being like, yeah, you know, one time I let a guy come up my ass, and then I shit it out into his mouth. And you're like, how the fuck... How the fuck did I get her to pull this I know, out? and you were just talking about <laughs> politics, like a sec. I remember I, I hooked up with this girl one time, and uh, she'd come to my show or whatever. And for some stupid reason, I was so horny or whatever, I literally tried to make my move between the first and second show. Like, we're at the club, and I like, grabbed her ass or something in the yeah. green room. Yeah, and she just yeah. looked at me like, what is wrong with you? And then... My whole second set, I was just thinking, ah, oh, man, I blew it or whatever. <laughs> but for some reason, she still wanted to go out and have a drink with me. So we ended up going out to this bar, and we're having a drink. And this girl is, like, giving me the uh, not-until-I-see-a-ring vibe, you know? Oh, coats God. on and all. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I think this is our guest here. Lewis. All right. Yeah, hey, uh, Danny's going to let you in, okay? All right. All right, bye. All right, so that was sort of unprofessional. So we could um, just, yeah. No, we're not editing that out. We're gonna show this. Is, <laughs> this not, is no. This is this is how it fucking works yeah. around here. This right? is a pre-recorded show. If you consider it, fucking it in the Danny intro. didn't show up until two minutes before. <laughs> there was no no sense of urgency. But let's but let's let's get back to the prude though. That's but just to make the point. That's how much respect we have for the audience. That even in the pre-recorded state. Go fuck yourself. We're not cutting out <laughs> answering the phone. The what middle. are we going to do? Piss off three listeners? I mean, honestly, Jeff. Look, I'm shutting off my cell phone here. So go... So so. So anyway, the, so yeah. she, she's giving me the whole Little House on the Prairie vibe, right? And, uh, she, you know, coats on and that kind of thing. And, dude, I don't know Terrible. what happened. I don't know what happened. All, all of a sudden, we're just talking, and, you know, it was really loud. We're kind of like this dance club or whatever. We're up at the bar. And uh, and all of a sudden, I just she sort of like talking like blah 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 blah. Hosted a sex party, blah blah blah, and I just went like what? And all of a sudden, she just starts fucking talking about sex. Cause I wouldn't even bring it up at that point because I fucked up so bad at the club. And she starts telling me how she used to host sex parties. I'm like, what? What? The, what are you talking like an orgy? She's like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And I was like, but well, what, what do you? Where did you have? She was part of like a group. She goes, sometimes I would have them at my house, and then other times. We would just rent a whole floor at a hotel, and people would just go from room to room to room. And I'm like, and you hosted this? And she's like, yeah. And I go, did you participate? She goes, yeah, you know, kind of. 
and it was the f most fucked up thing. I literally went from thinking like, there's no way I'm getting laid to I'm definitely getting laid to I don't I I don't want to touch this girl because I'm gonna get <laughs> fucking AIDS or something. <laughs> and somehow she still ended up I still she still ended up coming back to my uh, my hotel room and. Uh, Did you bang her? No, we messed around a little bit, and uh, I didn't have a condom or anything. And there was no way I was going near it. And then she would just she said, so, "Have you ever heard of mutual masturbation?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can do that." That's a great feeling <laughs> sometimes. Sort of rubbed one up when yeah. you get the nut. When it's the chick where you're like, "If I fuck this girl, I'm immediately." Oh yeah, I'm at a clinic. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna regret it. Oh, who's and kidding? Then, no, the reality is, I'll be thinking I need to go to a clinic for the next eight years until I finally meet a r woman responsible enough <laughs> to tell me that I need to go. <laughs> Oh, that's brutal, that's, dude. That's the girl I'm going to be thinking of. Oh, that's brutal. I just did the uh, the clinic run. I know. You just went down there. Yeah. How does it feel, Joe? Came... Feels great. I keep saying it's like the feeling you have after you go to confession. You're just like, well, well that skanky shit is gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Who was who the one you were worried about with with your, oh, uh, your Jesus, HIV test? dude. I had a couple doozies on that. Now, I always wear a condom. Always. Yeah, for those people uh, listening... Joe DeRosa is like he's you're like the kid from the, the high school film strip. Yeah. As far as Danny, do you realize Joe DeRosa? You told me you've never gone never. raw. Never. Ever. Ever. Never ever in my life have I ever raw dogged a girl ever. And how old are you? Twenty nine. Why? But why not? Because I'm terrified to catch something. I'm horrified. Danny, I have meltdowns. I, you know, I fuck girls with like hefty bag condoms on. <laughs> You know, this and I'm like and in a plutonium he, he, suit, and I'm still worried that I caught something. You know, I'm just like, I, it scares the shit out of me. And I'm he terrified. was sweating. He was actually sweating, like like going down there, getting like he's like, oh man, who? In my Thank defense, God. Thank God. I, in your defense, what? In my defense, I have fucked some brutal <laughs> skanks on the road. Oh. I, I'm not afraid of girls. Make... Girls with those vaginas that have the ability to eat through the hefty bag. I told you, man. <laughs> I fuck hefty bag like, condom like alien blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny, I fucked the girl in. Uh, he fucks the Gordon Weaver. <laughs> I fucked the girl in Florida, which right there, the yeah. word Florida and I fucked the girl. That they should never go together. Florida and Jersey are the two states we should never sleep with anybody. Oh, dude, you got to get some stats and, up, uh, Danny. Like I want to see like a high risk state. Dude, Danny, I fucked the girl in Florida. Uh, she was smoking hot. She looked like Brandy, the singer, right? Uh -huh. And uh, we're in my hotel room, and I'm naked on the bed. And she takes well, she takes my pants off, uh -huh. and she's looking at my dick, and she's giving me a hand job. And her phone rings. Her cell phone rings. She literally answers the phone. She goes, "Yeah, girl. Uh huh. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm staring at a dick." <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> and she goes. That's right, girl. I gotta go because I'm a suck it. And she, <laughs> and she got the phone and blew me. And then I fucked her. And I was like, oh, I'm finished. Whatever she's got, it burns through latex. <laughs> Dude, you know what? That, that sounds like dialogue for one of those bad black exploitation movies that, that, yeah, that end up getting protested. That yeah. that was actually. I was waiting for her to somersault. You know, and then jump up with a handgun, <laughs> you know, oh. like Foxy Brown. It was fucking, dude. It was, it was terrifying. Not terrifying enough for I me to not I fuck fucked her. This girl, I fucked this girl one time who was, uh, she was such a skank and so came across like uh, she wasn't even like an honest person. I forget what she said, but it, she had some sort of criminal past. So I'm always really bad about getting them out of my hotel room. So I was literally sleeping next to her, right? And my wallet and my watch were on the uh, the little fucking nightstand on her side of the bed. And literally the whole night I was sleeping in like seven minute intervals. And I'd be sleeping and then like the paranoia while I'm in my sleep that she's going to steal my oh, shit. Yeah. I would literally pop up and then look at her and make sure my wallet and my watch, that's right, was across on the dresser. Uh, that was brutal. That sucks, dude. That sucks. <laughs> oh, my God. I ever, well, that was another girl. I had one in Florida that used to be a stripper, and she was just skinny, which was, was freaking oh, yeah. Out. She was skinny. Too old to be that skinny. Yeah. She didn't and have a movie was... premiere coming out. There was no reason. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing blow the entire time. Like, she just kept stopping whatever we were doing to do lines, and then she'd be like, 
and she literally goes, she goes, I'm sorry my vagina's so dry. I've just done so much blow tonight. <laughs> oh, my God, Joe. I got to tell you something, man. My my dick would have tapped out, just like in the UFC right there. It just would have been like, all right, I'm out. Dude, a hard dick has no conscience, dude. It, you know, it was ready, dude, to, well, it was I ready go, to go. Dry vagina and Coke boogers? That's enough for me, man. The, in Florida? Yeah, she was hot, though. She was a stripper. I was I was on, you know, I, I mean. Oh, that was you needed the stripper story? That was, yeah, exactly. I needed the. I but I said, up. I got I got the test. I was in the clear. I, everything was negative. And I also, it had been like I had survived like the window. I hadn't fucked any girls in the, you know, when they're like, well, if it's been three months, conceivably. Like I had gone celibate for three months. And then I got the test, and I was Celibate clean. Celibate from what, Joe? Not banging girls with condoms every single time? No, no, no. I'm saying I didn't fuck any girls in three months. And then I got the test, and it was all negative, and I was like... I was like, that's it. No Joe, more if fucking... If they took an x-ray the of your internal organs, I bet there's a rainbow. Just... <laughs> <laughs> right over with like butterflies, like a Mariah Carey video. Yeah, I guess so, man. I, you know, I don't know. You know, sure, sure. Um, I, uh, you know what I'm you like, gonna... Joe? You're like one of those guys in the army, like acting like you saw some action and you were actually in the back, like peeling potatoes. You're like, yeah, just like that guy who called that one time. I saw a lot of crazy shit out there, man. Well, that's my problem. Is like I'm a real, I'm a real like pervert. Like I love like filthy, filthy sex. But I'm also too careful. So I would be, you know, I'd be like the Marine with the knife in his teeth. Like, you You'd know. You'd be the guy who wore know. the helmet and he actually has the chin, tr chin strap on. <laughs> yeah. I'd be on the battlefield like, let's go kick some enemy ass. But hold on. Let's make sure everything's in order for, you know, let's do this. Let's think before we move here, people. But let's really, you know, like, it, it's a contradiction, dude. It's It sucks. No, it's good. no but it's you, 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 you have to more worry about, because obviously you, st you still go down on girls, oral sex and all that type of thing. I, don't, I won't go down on a lot of girls. i got to kind of know a girl a little before I go down on her. And Which that's switches pretty what, safe. Yeah. She has a stuffed animal. And you're uh, like, okay, yeah, I'm if going she's in. Got a, if she's got a you know a Bert and Ernie <laughs> on her bed, then that means she's clean to me. I also, literally go by the gauge of well, she looks clean, like it, <laughs> which is the worst. Oh, absolutely. But I totally go by that. You know, I totally go by that. And as you can see, it works, Joe. Mm -hmm. You're clean. Yeah. Well, you know what are you gonna do? I was there watching, you go, ladies. Joe DeRosa. That was one of the things I did last clean night. Clean as a whistle. Was when I was trying to get to sleep. I was saying I couldn't get to sleep last night, and I watched, I watched this porno. Do you blow more money on cabs or on condoms over the course of a year? You live well, all the way uptown. You get them for free at the clinic. They're free. I mean, do you spend money on at the clinic? I don't even know where the clinic is. <laughs> well, uh, I do, Bill. And uh, <laughs> is it like a little <laughs> mobile home with the? <laughs> Improvised wooden steps that you walk yeah, it's into. It's like the bookmobile. <laughs> they, they, just, <laughs> they just come through town and make sure everybody's clean. I uh, I don't even know. I they don't were, know. I, I, condoms to me, you go. You to, get them you in go, the street. I live in Harlem. Week. I live in Harlem, so they give out. There's always like one of those tables in the street where they give you a bag of like a dozen condoms for free. And a little pamphlet on sickle cell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, they'll give you like a bag of condoms for free and lube. Oh my God, you're getting the fucking CIA condoms. The conspiracy condoms. Conspiracy that condoms that, the... that that they give to minorities to uh, yeah. that don't work. That's why they keep having all those kids. There's a government official down in the sewer grate next oh, to yeah. the table poking holes through the uh, yeah exactly the condoms for your hands. Did you see that white guy in the raincoat with like the sunglasses? <laughs> I um, dude, I watched this. I got to tell you this, dude. I watched this movie last night. I couldn't, I could not sleep, and I watched this movie called Seduced. But these were the three movies I watched last night. One was as you stayed up until yeah. seven in the morning. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. So one, the first movie I was watching was called Seduced by Evil, and it was a Suzanne Starring. Summers movie. Suzanne Summers from oh, how can you go Chrissy wrong? from Three's Company. Well, you hear the title and you think, oh, this is gonna be softcore porn. She's gonna show her tits. This is going to yeah, be awesome. Yeah, the thigh master. Yeah, and it's not. It was a fucking Lifetime movie that they were rerunning on HBO. And what was it called? Seduced by Evil. Oh, God. It what, was, what did the guy do? It's She goes to, like, a shaman who puts a spell on her. And I don't know, dude. I couldn't follow it. It was, you know, it was 4 o'clock in the morning. I was seeing... You know, double and you're just from sitting delirium. there with your dick in your hand waiting for something to jerk off. Uh, no, I'd happened. already masturbated twice before I turned the movie on, but I just wanted to see if for I could what, see... what, Wicked? Suzanne 
<laughs> now, actually, I ran into that guy, Yoshi, uh, that works for Evil Angel, and he gave me a copy of uh, Butthole Whores, it was called, which uh, I wasn't able to put together what the movie was about specifically. Uh, it was Our a little highbrow. Serpico just showed up. <laughs> yeah. We were talking to a retired police officer. In a little bit. But, dude, here's the thing. I was watching this movie... And I, I, all I could think about the whole thing, this movie was made in 1994. It was the worst fucking thing. It was like they made a, you know, it was like a Danielle Steele novel turned into a movie gone wrong. It was, it was horrible. And I'm watching it. I remember watching the E! True Hollywood story about Three's Company and how Jesus, she, Joe, do you watch anything of quality? She left the show. Three's Company was watching the solid. Ario Speedwagon behind the music. Three's and Company, I just bite that. your tongue. Bite your tongue. Three's Company was a great fucking, oh. come on, man. Well, you're a little older than I. You know, I was five when I watched Three's Company. How old were you, <laughs> How old were you when you watched Three's Company? I'm only 10 years you're older You're probably a solid 26, 27. No, Three's Company, I was like 12. No. Well, I, you didn't like Three's Company? I mean, then... Well, either way, it doesn't matter. I like the sweat hogs and, and that shit back then, but now when I watch Horshack, he doesn't make me laugh anymore. Mr. Cartier. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, somehow it just doesn't have oh, the that's, same effect. That's not Horshack. Anyway, who okay. cares? The uh, the point is, I remember watching the E. True Hollywood story about Suzanne Summer, and she left that show because she was immensely popular on the show, and she was like, her people, her agents, were, they felt that she was the reason that that show was so successful, uh -huh. and she demanded, like, you know, she pulled the Brad Garrett thing where she was like, I want this much per episode or I'm fucking leaving, and they were like... Dang, fucking leave then. We'll replace you with another hot blonde. We don't give a shit, and that's when right. Terry came in, and I'm like... And the Jesus show sucked Christ. after that. Yeah, and I was like, D this chick was, I mean, she was there. She was like at that, you know, position where it was like, I'm, I'm here, I'm in, I made it, I, I, I that's it, a car blind, and then. That's that. That was it, dude. What did she yeah. do after that? It was that's like that chick, uh, Rhoda. Didn't she do the same shit? Valerie, Valerie Harper. Harper. Yeah, she left the Hogan family. Yeah. It was called the Valerie Valerie Harper show, whatever. And she left, and they went. Hey, go fuck yourself. We'll change to the Hogan family. Yeah, and I just wrote it in <laughs> that, she, that died. she died. And, uh, and then everybody felt sorry like, for the family, like it was a real family, but like I she really see, died, I can, I can and they kept watching it. But I can see the uh, like someone like uh, Suzanne Summers doing that, because she was still hot, but you don't wait till you're 50. But Especially I mean, as a female, I mean that's how it is, you know. You gotta is, be, you gotta be fuckable, dude. We got, we got to get back to these stats here, Joe. Just to let you know, when you're on the road, if anybody's planning a road trip, we got to let you know which states you definitely want to bag it in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, we, we got it. Yeah, yeah I downloaded oh. some uh, government report which gives you the rate of all the different STDs per hundred thousand. Okay. So Florida. Wait, wait, Joe. You want to take a guess? You want to take a guess? Real quick, though. How far before we? How far into this government report are we going to get before Billy starts conspiracizing <laughs> on, on uh, how it's a, a mind wash and how they're trying to fuck us out of something? Well, <laughs> these, this is this is their blueprint. This is where they want to attack Joe. Oh, fine. Right. So, so Florida. If, if, what am I guessing here? The percentage per, of people that have AIDS in Florida? No, the no. number the number of positive cases of gonorrhea per hundred thousand. What's the number one state you don't want to bang in, Joe? What, what are you going to go with? I'm going with Florida. You going with Florida? I'm going with Georgia. Well, you're looking at the fucking map, Bill. I can't see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all going to be fucked because we have to actually name these states because the name isn't on over the state. Oh, Jesus so, Jesus, Christ. Danny, no, if we're you, not fucked. I know what the states if are. If you point to one I over don't. here, I'm not going to know. <laughs> you don't know what they are? I have no oh my clue. God. I don't know. He's a fucking moron. <laughs> no, he's not. I don't know what they are either. I couldn't tell you what half of those states were. You don't know what the states are, Joe. You you go on uh, you go on the road. You don't look at a map. Where no, I'm going? I don't. You fucking nerd. <laughs> Dude, that, you know something? I know where you're going with this, but that's not nerdy. To, to... <laughs> so wait a second. I'm a moron, but you guys are having a spelling bee later. <laughs> I know. Well, I can see not knowing how to spell, but like. No, actually, you know what? You're right, because I use words all the time that I don't even know how to fucking spell to try to impress people. So, all right, so you guys are right. Wait, I'm, just so, not, I'm just not a moron in this. So I'm betting Florida. I know, and I can pick out Florida on a map without it being labeled. So I'm Jesus, proud of Joe, that. wow. <laughs> you can pick that one I'm out? How about New that. York? Can you pick that one out, too? I'm proud of that. New York, maybe. The, uh, Louis. I'm I don't think you well, can hear. Yeah, him out let there. him know we're going to be because he's looking really depressed out there. Let him know we're going to we're going to get him. In yeah, there. I told him. Okay, I told him. all right. So, no, Florida is not the uh, the most infected state with gonorrhea. How do you know, Danny? You don't even know what the fuck. Well, because I know are. Florida's right there. Whatever that state is, is. 
Can I do? Uh, I just saw where you pointed. <laughs> what is it? It's towards the east. No, no, it isn't. It Joe, isn't. point to that. I want to see if you know what if, if you know what state that is. Go ahead. Point to. Danny doesn't know. Go ahead. Point to the state. What state is that, that? one? What is it? <laughs> that one is. Uh, he has a college degree. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> that one is. Uh, that, already, that's already, Alabama. No, it's Mississippi. You fuck. Mississippi idiot. is the highest. Forget that it's the Alabama's highest. Alabama's right next to it. Don't act like that's that way off. Alabama's right next to Mississippi. Wow. <laughs> Alabama touches wow. Florida. Wow. Dude, that is some Bobby Kelly shit. You just pointed... <laughs> did you just not point to the second state from the right? Where, oh, no, that, that one. one. Which one he pointed? Oh, the Fuck third, you. The third you're one not over. Getting out of that. <laughs> you're not getting out of it. You're full of shit. Because not only that, you, if you thought he was just pointing Alabama, you would have gone to Alabama. But you were like, ah, that one is ah. Wow. I remember a long time ago, Bobby Kelly, uh, his booker called him up and said, uh, yeah, I got you a college in Wisconsin. He goes, awesome. What state is that in? <laughs> I can just hear him. Dude, what state is that in? Dude, you're, you're, you're right there with him, though. Oh, gosh. That's hilarious. Mississippi. Mississippi. Now, who would have thought Mississippi? Dude, first of all, who would go to Mississippi? So I'm feeling really good about my chances of not getting gonorrhea yeah. at any point in my lifetime. That's absolutely true. The uh, uh, I got so called to on another dumb thing the other night. I was talking to Russ Beneve. About what? And two of his friends. I don't Russ even Beneve, remember. Russ Beneve, another uh, comedian. Yeah. Got a whole chunk on rape. Yeah. Hilarious comedian. <laughs> His crowd work, I was I was laughing the other night because he does a joke about suicide, uh -huh. and he goes, "So is anybody else suicidal like me?" And that's that's like crowd work. It runs his head. Yeah, but I go uh, suicidal. Come on, people, yeah. back me up. <laughs> he cracked on me about something. I go, I go, really? I go, why? Because I'm not a disturbed sycophant like you. And he goes, "Do you even know what sycophant means?" And I was like. Uh, no, I actually don't. He just called me on in front of a whole group of people, and we just started laughing. He's going, how fucking embarrassing that you just got called on it, you fucking idiot, you know? Well, you're thinking, ah, I got sick in there. Yeah, I got, I got fan. fan. Exactly. Sicko fan. It sounds like psychopathic. Dude, we've been shooting this shit here for almost a half an hour. I think we got to take a break here. Uh, and that's it. Next up, we're going to hit you with the greatest hit, bitch. Here comes the first motherfucking discussion from the very first motherfucking episode. Ah, shit. It seems like just yesterday these two motherfuckers started doing this motherfucking program. Well, fuck it. Here it is. The Navy discussion. On and four. I did a show the other night uh, at a club in New York, and I was talking in my set. I, t I told a joke about a story, actually, about when I had gotten into a fight with some guys in the Navy. Uh -huh. And I said three times to the story, I go, I support the troops. I really do. But these guys were dicks. So I got into a, a big argument with them. Uh, and there were two people from the Navy in the front row. Jesus, Joe, you're yelling at retards and the troops? <laughs> <laughs> well, that kid wasn't retarded. You he was fucking a fucking kick dick. a puppy at the end of your last gig? <clears throat> so... I kept saying I support the troops, but there was these two people in the front in the Navy, and I said, hey, you guys are in the Navy, too. I think that's great. And then I started to talk about how I don't really vote, and I kind of don't get into politics and everything. So after the show, I'm in... What percentage of people do vote, Joe? I'm going to go with 30... No, 15%. Okay. <laughs> See, dude, you're still picking round numbers. Yeah, right? yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> But after the show, in the lobby, this the chick that was in the front row from the Navy comes up to me and starts screaming at me, You're a fucking jackass. You don't get it. I put my fucking ass on the line for you. This chick's like 50, by the way. And I'm like, are you even in the Navy? Well, well not anymore, but I was. And I put my fucking ass. And I go, lady, let me just say this. If you're going to make a statement, make it an intelligent statement. You don't know what you're saying right now. And she's yelling at me and yelling at me. And finally, I go, lady, you know what? Fuck you. You're a fucking moron. Right? And her husband now gets in my <laughs> was face. Was she still in uniform, Joe? No. She was in regular cunt clothes. And uh, then her husband Most gets... Most people, people that listen to here, you, you got to know about Joe. When Joe has these meltdowns, he usually does it in front of like somebody like... Uh, he'll yell at like one of those Salvation Army people with like the belt. <laughs> it's like when Joe has like a meltdown, he's always like in front of a church. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really ever strike out against any real cause or legitimate effort or anything. It's always, you know, 
a homeless man. One time I tried to beat up a homeless man because he insulted Billy in the street, and I tried to fight him. Oh, dude. I'm a, yeah, this, this guy, Danny, this guy, how, how old is he? Yeah, he's probably 65 years old. He, he's yeah, he's old. Yeah, that 58 to 65, <laughs> a baby boomer who just uh, never happened for him, you know? This fucking guy, I don't know what happened. He, he started giving us shit or whatever. So I gave him a little bit of shit back. We were kind of drunk or whatever. So the guy comes down the street. It was me, Joe. We were two girls. There was yeah. like five of us in this group. This 50 year old black, 58 year old black dude comes running down the street. And he starts doing almost like this, uh, this, um, I saw a karate movie in 1972 stance. Yeah, yeah. Going, come on, man, come on. I kept saying he looked like Marvin Gaye because he had this beard. So I, I kept singing, uh, what's going on as he's doing this shit. But Joe gets in his face like he's in an action movie. Like, you want to go? Let's fucking go. Dan, he was fucking with you. Fuck Dude, him. And then, and then you, you I was spreaded away like you just like you just went at it with I some guy. I felt good. Yeah, like you felt good. Gold's gym. Give me, in my defense... We played uh, we played beer pong in that bar for a good hour. That's what he was. He had he had big sad Marvin Gaye brown eyes. He too. was a dick. But you know what's he was funny? Homeless Joe. Here's the commentary of the two stories. You sung what's going on with the Marvin Gaye guy. This military lady. I'm fighting with her and fighting with her. She won't listen to me, and she starts going, "You ought to protect your goddamn country." So I just started singing "America the Beautiful." I was just like, "America, America." You know I hate, I, it is a pet peeve of mine. I hate when people in the Navy say you're protecting our country. You're not. <laughs> okay, who the fuck has a navy out there? That's gonna, didn't we destroy all navies after yeah, well, World War Two? Did, didn't we uh, have that pi problem with those uh, those eight pirates in the oh, in off the, the rowboat the, off the coast of Africa? <laughs> yeah, you got you got you got to wait for. Uh, yeah. Seven Zimbabwe's with the outboard motor. Yeah, that was that thing happened. The one. <laughs> Time. Like seriously, dude. If, if you were going to war, okay, say if you're gonna if you're gonna go into politics, so you needed it on your record that you didn't pussy out during wartime, and right. you you wanted to go into service, the fucking navy's the way to go. Yeah, navy. You just sit off the coast. You I don't, think you don't you're do absolutely shit. right. Yeah, you sit in a little hubby, you eat some chowder. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, on your boat. Exactly. That's I'll tell you, the life. only guys who who get off easier are the guys with like in the air force with like the orange sticks that like guide the plane in, or maybe like the guy who sticks the blocks under the wheels. I don't even want to be the guy with the sticks. I want to be the guy making the sticks. Fuck oh, the that. Guy, the I don't even want to be out on the aircraft. You drill the hole for yeah. the rope that they stick <laughs> exactly. in there, so then one day you can flip out at a comedy club. I'm it's... fucking protecting your ass. <laughs> exactly. Everybody acts like they're on the front line. I, I, bet, I bet Navy SEALs and those guys fucking hate that shit. Everybody oh, walking Jesus around. Jesus Christ. So, yeah. Some guy that just had to slit some mercenary's throat. <laughs> yeah, some, some guy <laughs> in the, in the Navy the sunning himself in the Persian Gulf on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Don't you love that? It's so like, the guy's in fucking Fallujah. Yeah. Navy SEAL Johnson. <laughs> uh, we need you to infiltrate the desert and take out this czar. Uh, Miller, uh, go guide this plane in. <laughs> but yeah, you're both point, protecting the country. Point in the direction that the plane's taking <laughs> off. You ever seen that guy? You just got to take like a yoga class. He can bend down far enough so you don't get sucked into the fucking jet engine. That's yeah. right. Here on Uninformed, if you're listening to this shit and you're in the Navy, we're saying, uh, you know, unless you're a Navy SEAL, you know, go fuck yourself. You're not protecting us. All right? You're, you're, on, you're on a ship. Uh, you're on a cruise that's what, four years long. What percentage? Now, honestly, not yeah, like I'm just trying to get some callers here. Not our fake percentage. Honestly, what what real percentage w would you estimate of people in the military actually put their ass on the line? Like are actually in the fucking fire? Eighteen. That's is that that's eighteen percent. About eighteen. Yeah. If you got like uh, you know you got a couple guys. What do we got? We got like seven jets over there. Seven to ten, right? <laughs> No, we do, we do it. I saw it on Wiki Wikipedia. We got like, yeah. All the, if you just tuning in, all this shit's backed up. We got it. We got encyclopedias right in front of us. We got like eleven jets over there, right? All right. That's a good number, Joe. If you're gonna guess later on. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's the fucking guys. You know, you're on point. That Vietnam shit. All right, if, you, if you're in some computer guy, yeah, my, you, ever, you ever see this shit like they try to suck you into getting in the military and they show the guy sitting in the control room in the laptop? I mean, that's basically. I've actually gotten upset with my dad. Cause You're in a he, cubicle in the middle of a war. I've gotten upset with my dad because he's in Vietnam, 
or he was in Vietnam, and I've actually gotten annoyed with him because he has no good stories because he worked in the fucking file room. Exactly. And it was, it's like, it, you know, I remember being a kid and being like, Dad, tell me a story about the war. And he was like, hey, you know. My I dad was in the Navy. Papers. My dad was in the Navy. He was in the Medical Corps, and they didn't even ship him to Vietnam. They shipped him to Chelsea Naval Hospital in Massachusetts. <laughs> He had some incredible stories about wounds, but it's not like they were going, Medic! And he was, you know, serpentining. <laughs> yeah, if there's any uh, any veterans out there that want to call up and, uh, you know, actually seen some action. and uh, do, do, do you get, like, annoyed with other people who start strutting around like, you know, they, they, they had some incoming when they're really just, you That's know, true, cause pe peeling every... fucking potatoes? What, do these lights mean that there's calls coming? Yeah, we got calls. Oh, actually, oh, let's cool. go to Ken in Massachusetts. Okay. His son is in the Navy. Oh, okay. Ken, what you got? Okay, uh... You telling me uh, that the Navy doesn't play a role in the Army? That's what I'm saying, so, sir. I'm saying it's a it's a it's a tugboat with a gun on the front. Except except Navy SEALs, Ken. Except Navy except SEALs. Except Navy SEALs. Okay. Um, I don't know. My son was in the Navy and he was in the USS Kennedy in Afghanistan. Can you prove that? <laughs> can I prove it? Yeah. yeah he, he this can sounds prove like it. this is like off the top of your head. You know, you got, no, any, it's not you got off any the top statistics? of my head. <laughs> But anyway, he so got... you don't have to get uh, angry, okay? You can just present... This is a very wide-open uh, forum, so I don't need okay. anger. He, um... They shot, and, uh... They fired guns, and they got... Nine out of ten major... What's this, paintball? Major attack points. Major what points? Yeah, dude, you're talking <laughs> shop here. Major, I mean, target, I, major target points. But what what were the major... What do you mean by... Ma they had ten major target right, points. When, this is uh, right after 9-11. He was uh, shipped out to Afghanistan... On a JFK. Uh-huh. And they were ordered to fire. You Can know. you get to Afghanistan by a boat? I thought it was surrounded by land. Well, that's it? the thing. That's the thing, Ken. It's like, uh, how in danger are the boats, uh, uh, wherever they are near I mean, Afghanistan, if I, if I versus kid, the I, I, Army and the Marines that are actually in the desert getting bombed in their in their, their bunkers and all that shit? Yeah, well, they do play an important role, though. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here's my problem. Yeah, they do. They, they bring over the guys who are going to get shot at. Every time somebody says they're in the military, <laughs> dude, you gotta admit, man, if you're gonna be in there, I, I'd rather be on a on a fucking destroyer. Okay, I have not well, seen any good well, navy. Son... Listen, listen, sir, sir, you're very hostile. Um, I'm not hostile. Okay, well, Ken, you're very, my... pat, you're very pat I'm hyper, but Ken, I'm not hostile. Ken, listen, okay. you don't you don't have to be proud just because your kid was in there. My dad was in the army, and I'm not proud of him. He's got no good stories. <laughs> His best story was that he saw the post office get blown up. That was the best thing he had to tell me. That's a shitty story. Not every guy propelled he down got a... a rope from the helicopter <laughs> with a backpack on. He cut it. He got a purple heart. He cut his thumb peeling potatoes. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Ken. All right, man. See, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I mean, you figure, I thought I was really getting nervous. Here, like this guy's be. Let me tell you something, you sons of yeah. bitches. He was just like, uh, you know, they uh, had some ballistic. Uh, yeah. Can we make a rule? F, F yeah, a yeah. <laughs> I thought he was gonna. I want, I want to hear somebody hardcore. You know, who's you know, who got into this shit over there? Do you do you get fucking annoyed by people who who are trying to pretend? Like, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's like when I worked in a warehouse, Joe. This is exactly like going to war. You know, I'd be like unloading the truck. <laughs> I'd be unloading the trucks. No, there's a point here. I'd, I'd be on I'd be the, the ignorance, the level of ignorance already is, um, is astounding. I can't. Yeah, but we're protected by the name. You're uninformed. You can't get mad at this shit. Okay, oh, look, Jesus Joe. Christ. I have to go with what I know. Okay, I'm and with you. I'm with you right now. I know warehousing. Okay, with this goddamn internet. Okay, it's it's gonna end it. Okay, because right. all boxes are going to become digitized. In fact, at least 43% of them at this point are, are digitized. It's not even matter. They, they just, it's like Star Trek now. <laughs> so, and if anybody wants to dispute that, I, I, got, I got the fucking facts what is your in front of me. Anybody in warehousing that wants to fucking call this show up, okay, I will bury you with the shit that I can come up with about warehousing. <laughs> this is my point. I hated I hated when 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 we went to to the uh, this is just like war when I was working in, in the uh, in the warehouse and the, and and the company picnic would come along and all these suits would put on their fucking t-shirts and their you know it's Friday dress down wear like uh, like they weren't making a hundred grand a year and they try to act like grunts and like they were unloading trucks. I hear you. All right, you know I'll, what I'm give you that. I'll give you that. I do. I'm telling you with the with the warehouse door open, the neighborhood that I was in, it was potential that you could get shot. So dude, it was the it same was thing. Just like war. <clears throat> it was the same thing when I worked for the uh, when I worked for the Senate in Texas. 
and the senators, I remember. The Senate in Texas? Yeah, the Senate's, believe it or not, uh, the, the Senate, the senators would have these, like, parties, you know. Did they know you were half Egyptian, Joe? They didn't. They didn't. You kept they, that low key down there, It huh? was weird. Their, their nostrils would flare up a bit oh. when I was around them. Joe, did, did you mess with Texas? <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> The whole thing was, they would have the senators would have these parties, and they'd have like some kind of bluegrass band at their party, and the senator would come in in boots and jeans, and they'd have a keg, and it'd be like, ah, get get some gumbo, son. I'm just one of y'all, and it's like, no, you're not. You're a fucking millionaire that lives in a mansion somewhere. You're I'm working for twenty two grand a year in this shit. Dude, home. that is so much like fucking war. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. See, so we know. That's my point. Yeah, we know, we know, we That's know what we're point. saying. That's my point. What the, uh, percentage of people are going to die of heart disease in uh, Texas? Uh, not enough. Is, oh, you didn't, my... you didn't have a good time down there, Joe? N not particularly. I'm not you knocking... Know, you, know, you don't look like a line dancer, Joe. It, you know what? Here's what I didn't like. I lived in Austin. There wasn't... I was ready for shit-kicking hoo-ha Texas, and Austin is just the most liberal, bleeding-heart pretentious cunt city oh, on the hilarious. fucking map, dude. That's like when I moved from Boston down to uh, North Carolina, and I moved down there, and I thought I was going to be the cool kid. I thought I was going to be, like, footloose. Yeah. Like, they were all going to be, like, 20 years behind yeah. us. And I got down there, dude. They, they were doing more fucking drugs. It was, yeah, they listened to the same music. Dude, it was so annoying. Dancing wasn't outlawed. It was so annoying. I was ready for, like, bar fights and beer brawls and shit, and then you get there and it's like, have you seen the new extended version of Nosferatu? It really, it's, uh, go fuck yourself, you know what I mean? Oh, well, you should have gone, so... gone to the Houston area. Once you get past the sea of fatness that is Houston, they were actually voted the fattest city. I was afraid to go to Houston because the, the uh, ghetto boys were from there, and that was, it always sounded like a really, like, dangerous place. What, because of one rap group, Joe? You live in New York City. They How were, many they fucking were rappers intense. are here? You know Jay-Z from were, here? Yeah, 50 but... 50 Cent, all those Hot the 97, boys, the lobby of Hot 97. The Ghetto Boys used to have songs about fucking dead bodies. So that's that, you know, I think that crosses a certain line. Yeah, it goes into, like, gay. That's almost like, uh, like uh, death metal. Like, <laughs> like we're sick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I fucking, I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm it's old. It's kind of annoying. You are old, but it's, you know, whatever. Who cares? What are you going to do? We, we had another caller on this military thing? Oh, or? yeah. Let's let's try to stay on topic here. Sure. Let's check out. I want to hear somebody from the military that tr that, that either defends the Navy also, or... Also, too, if anybody wants to call from Austin, Texas and try to defend that, I would love to... That's great, Joe. Let's try to have nine different <laughs> topics going on as people call in. <laughs> Not right this minute. Just at some point. Well, let's go to Trevor in Wyoming. Okay. Trevor. Trevor. Hello. Yeah. yeah, Trevor. Yeah, hello. Hey, uh, Hi. I'm, uh, I'm, I just got out of the Marines, and uh, I just want to say that there's a lot of, there's a lot of army and a lot of Marines over there in Iraq that really don't do shit either. You know, like they go over there. Let me ask you a question, there. Trevor. Did, did, did you do anything over there? Like, did, like, like when yeah, Charlie yeah, Sheen yeah. makes the Iraq movie, is he gonna play <laughs> you? <laughs> uh, uh, probably. Probably not so much, but uh, Emilio. Infantry, anyways, I infantry. I didn't sit behind a desk, that's for sure. Now let me ask you this: Do you get fucking annoyed by uh, the guys who sit behind the desk? Do you think they should have a lesser uniform than you? Like maybe they shouldn't have combat boots. Maybe they should have like camouflage, like loafers, or something like <laughs> something of that effect. <laughs> it's disgusting that it's disgusting that they get paid the same amount of money that I do when I'm when I go out and I get shot at and they sit on base all day. You know what I mean, like. Well, tr Dude, I, I worked in a warehouse, man. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> they wear the same ribbons. They get the same awards. You know, like to a to a civilian or to a regular person, you look at you look at two Marines or two soldiers, and you don't know the difference. Well, let me ask but, you this: have, have you ever caught one of those people behind the desk trying to act like uh, like like they have some street cred over there, like almost like the whole rap thing, like trying to act hard, and they actually grew up in the suburbs? Oh yeah, dude, all the time. Like. Uh, do you call them out on it? Like, oh, yeah. Like, uh, or like you'll be in a bar and you'll catch some fag talking about how he thinks he's got post-traumatic stress because he saw a dead body or something. You know, and you kind of go. <laughs> right. You know, it, you know it, it's Cause, pretty weak, cause, man. Because he downloaded faces of death in his That's cubicle. Hilarious. <laughs> Trevor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Trevor, so let me... I've always been uh, dumbfounded by this. If everybody gets the same pay and one group has a shittier job and is in more danger than the other group, then why volunteer to go infantry or why, you know what I mean? Why not try to go uh, desk job type of thing and still get all the benefits of the military but not being shot at and all that stuff, you know? 
Well, because that, that's for pussies, man. Like, who joins, who joins the Marine Corps to sit behind the desk? I like you. I like you, Trevor. Hey, is that, uh... <laughs> the, 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 like, the reason why the people I know, and uh, I don't want to say me, the reason why they join is so they can go kill somebody or so they can go blow some shit up. Not to be on a fucking desk and... Dude, uh, why don't they have you in the commercial? Yeah. <laughs> you know what they should have? They should have the first half of the commercial where they teach you people computers and all that stuff, and then you just bust in in the middle of it yeah. with a fucking, like, AK just going, that's for pussies. Yeah, Trevor. Navy's for pussies. Trevor, if you would have called me when I was in high school, you, they would have had me. Because the guy that called me just went, I hear you play the drums, Joe. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, how'd you like to play them for your country? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I really wouldn't, actually. If you would have called me and be like, dude, you want to go blow some fucker's face off? I'd be like, yeah. That's <laughs> you ever see that movie Uncommon Valor? It's just like that. There's going to be 50 of them and one of you, and you're not going to die. <laughs> well, listen, man, I got to tell you, I got nothing but respect for, for every anybody who's over there. Christ, I mean, it, I mean even if I, if I was over there not seeing action, the fucking sunburn that I would get. But I'm just saying, man, the fact that you're, you're you got you guys ought to get a little... Uh, a little more money, but that's fun. That's funny. People fake fake it like they've been like maybe seen some action, like a forty year old virgin. Right. And he tries to act like he got laid, and he's talking about touching titties. Like ah, oh, yeah, it's just yeah. Like, that... It's like a bag of sand. Well, the uh, the wigger analogy you brought up. The hey, summer, easy there, Kramer. That's, that's... Easy. Okay, <laughs> we don't need Jamie Masada with the fucking the, uh... Laugh Factory logo <laughs> behind him. Body, listen. That's, that's a perfect analogy. Trevor, though. thanks for calling. Thank you, Trevor. That's a perfect analogy. Like, it really is. Like, Dude, all my analogies yeah. are right on the fucking money. 90% well, of them. 90%. 80%. 75. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, did we piss off anybody in Texas at all? No. All right. Nobody. Right, well, they think they all agree then. No more Navy stuff? Because right. there's uh, Steve in Long yeah. Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually agrees with you guys. All right. Steve. Yo. Yeah. You know, the, the actual amount of people actually see action over there is uh, probably like 5%. You know what? I like this like guy. One, He's using 1%. percentages. 1%. 1%. Per it's that low? <laughs> that low. I was over there in Afghanistan, and it was hot. And that was about, and uh, I, I made sure uh, the, U, the UN didn't get in our way. Let me ask you, are, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Listen to me, are you back? No, I'm calling from a fucking cell phone in Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm really an idiot. Yeah. All right, when you go out to bars and try to get pussy, do you, do you try to pretend like you every saw Every single some, time. You try to pretend like you saw action. <laughs> oh, every single time. Okay, can, can you do the voice? Can you do the voice I've like I've seen the, things, the... man. I've seen things. Yeah. You don't, you don't ask, just don't ask questions. Hold on, I'll be the, I'll be the chick. Let's, let's role play it. Ready? Right, so you, I'm just standing at the bar, all right? Hello. And you're approaching me, so go ahead. Hey, sweetie, what's going on? I, used, I was in Afghanistan. Hey, yeah. what, what was that like? Ah, uh, the depth over there is just, it's awful. Oh, my pussy's so wet. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the worst impression of anything. You, you sound like you were bombing an audition to be the next Muppet on Sesame Street. I don't know, it's a sock puppet with a high voice. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I just made my voice go a little higher. There's no depth to this character whatsoever. Joe DeRosa, yeah, no, see? On the spot. Joe DeRosa. I give you what I got. Uh, Steve, did you get laid, though? Oh, uh, yeah, plenty of times. Mm -hmm. it That's works. awesome, dude. It works. Just, just the uniform. Do, do you practice in the mirror to get that, that fucking 200-yard stare? You know, it works every time when you when you when you shake your head when you're uh, when you're giving the lines too. Like like you got something else going on in the back of your head. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like it. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah, Would you be offended yeah. if I tried that later on tonight? Uh, you know what? I'd be offended if you didn't. <laughs> okay, I got I got a green jacket. I might, might throw that on a little bit later. Just yeah. Sort of <laughs> Steve, come to the after party tonight after the show. You got it. Yeah, it's gonna be at um, where are we having it. Yes, the subway. There's <laughs> No, it's going to be hot, man. There's going to be a DJ. We're going to go to Playwrights Tavern after the show on 49th Street between 7th and Broadway for okay. our little after party. So if you feel like driving out, we'll be there drinking I'll, quite a bit. I'll be there. Pl plenty of seats, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks for the call. Oh, All right, you, well, Steve. we'll take one more. Do we have anybody who's in the Navy who's, like, pissed and saying, uh, yeah, is anybody doesn't... my mop is defending your freedom? You know what the funny thing is? No. I mean, everybody's saying, yeah, you guys are right. I was in the Navy. Jesus Christ! Let's talk to Cody. Cody and okay. Austin. We can't What's up, man? Oh, Cody and Austin. Here we go. We'll get we'll get a little double shot that? here. I was actually I was actually a nuclear engineer in the Navy, biggest fucking nerd job in the world, and I lived in Austin for like ten years, so I can back you up on both fronts. Yeah, there but I we gotta go, tell Cody. You, man, nice. Dude, I gotta nice. tell you, man. The worst part though is not the assholes that you run into in bars and shit in the civilian world. The worst part is when you're actually in the Navy and you're fucking working in a shop with a guy. 
like you're he's like in charge of you watch center supervisor or whatever and he's like that because when he thinks he's all fucking gung-ho because he's throwing some chemicals and beakers and shit right you know what i mean right and right. he makes your life fucking hell because he wants you to feel like you're out there shooting people and stuff you so know you ba- I mean? you're basically yeah. saying that like this last guy was saying that maybe one two percent of people actually see action but you see vet you see people in, in the armed services every night you know Saying that I'm defending your country and blah blah. I guess they're speaking for that one percent. I understand it, but I think there ought to be like a teleprompter underneath. Like uh, the, technically, this person has never been shot at since his yeah, older brother bought a BB gun when he was eight years old. And and that 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 guy giving you shit, like your your lab supervisor guy, that's some fucking pussy. That's taking all in yeah, his insecurity shit out on you. You know what I mean? Like he's fucking it's, it's feeling like, shit for yeah, not being out there. The school wants to grow up to be a cop. You know what I'm saying? Right, the right. Guy most shit growing up is the first one who wants to join the fucking police academy because then he'll have the power. Right. The guys that suck are the ones that stay in the military for fucking ever and rely on that crutch of coolness. Because now every time they go to a bar, people are buying them drinks and shit. Man, I saw some Navy guys in a bar three nights ago, and they were talking all this shit about Iraq and all that. And I, and I, and, you know, I kind of like to bait them a little bit. So right. did, did, did they know that you? Did, did they know that you were in the uh, the service? Oh, no. no, 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 no. I don't even tell him. I just, I just, you know, talk to him. Oh, that's really cool, man. Yeah. And then toward the end of the conversation, I pointed his arm and yeah, yeah. Those two little feathers mean you're a fucking secretary. Shut the fuck up. Ooh. You know what I mean? We should get you and the last guy to fight somewhere <laughs> later. I'm, I'm that's, all for it, man. Well, that's what that's what uh, sparked this whole thing is because that chick in the navy screaming at me and she's like 50 and I go, lady, are you in the navy? And she's like, well, well, not not anymore, but I will. It's like. Yeah, but she was in the Navy. Yeah, her her job was to blow an admiral. Here we go. Another classic from episode one. Episode one. Ha ha. I like that shit. That sounds like some Star Wars shit. Anyway, sit back and check it. The game show, ho. The reason that Nia is here is um, why am I here? We're gonna do uh, a game show of sorts uh, right now. Basically, what it was is uh, it's always funny to watch politicians um, when they're running for a certain office try to sort of politi- politically uh, correct their way through through a tough question to they answer ne- they, something. They never answer the question tactfully. They never answer the question. They never answer the question truthfully. That's for certain. So uh, we were thinking we should do a game show where. We get random, really hard questions thrown at us, us being Bill and Graham, myself. And the goal is you have to answer these questions truthfully, but without losing any votes. That's the trick. Uh, The second we smell bullshit, you get buzzed by the other players. Uh, And the second you spin it too hard into something else, you get buzzed. But also, if you're too brutally honest, you get buzzed, too. So we understand the rules. We're basically sitting around going, these fucking politicians, they never answer questions. And then we're like, well, if you actually answered them honestly, you'd lose votes. And then we started talking shit, going, I could fucking do that. So now we're going to see. All right. So here's how we're going to do it. Go ahead. Nia's going to ask the question. She's going to pull them randomly out of that. Some of them are easier than others, right? Mm -hmm. We'll go in order. Billy will get asked a question first. While he's while he's answering his question, Nia, myself, and you, Greer, will act as the judges. Okay. Uh, When it's my turn, how many points? You, Billy, Nia, judge, and so on. Uh, This feels like when the electricity goes out and you're like, "Fuck, we got to play a board game here." (laughs) (laughs) We'll just give we'll give one we'll give one point for question. Fuck it, and you got like um, 17 seconds to answer it. (laughs) All right. Wow. No, we're very accurate. We do a lot of research here. Okay. So here we are. This is uh, Who Wants to Be a Politician. It right. <laughs> feels like college radio. <laughs> Fuck that. We did a great job for two hours and 40 minutes. There's going to be yeah. some shit. This, this is where the show might guys. jump the shark, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> this might be funny. All right. All right, Nia. Let's, let's... With our host, Nia. All right. So the first question. For who? Do, for you, Bill Burr. Okay. Do Jews run the media? <laughs> oh wow! You hit me fucking hard right off the bat. Well, I would definitely say that uh, there are a lot of Jews in the media, but to suggest that they're all working as one is a little too—I uh, don't know. There, there's a lot of them, uh, but no, I'd say that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything any you Semitic. Jumped, you backpedaled at the end. <laughs> yeah. But there's a bunch of Irish guys who are cops. You know what I'm saying? Everybody picks something that they run. 
Well, you know what? You should have said that as your answer, and you would have gotten a point. Really? You, <laughs> you know what? You should stop being so is smug. Time up? Shut is up. Time up you got to stop being so smug like like you're <laughs> fucking up by 50 points. <laughs> it's, it's Wait a second, up. though. Where is, where is the timer, though? I'm holding it right all here. All right, all right. Holding the so timer. you could kind of include it, that last part. Question. we got to keep it going. All right, next question. Uh-oh. Who's this one? For, for Greer? Greer. Okay. For Greer Barnes. <laughs> Greer Barnes. Greer Barnes trying to get elected. <laughs> Are Asian people rude? Um, I wouldn't say that Asian people are rude. Um, I just, <laughs> yes, I, over. I, no, I'm just saying. You just um, lost Chinatown. <laughs> um, you know, it's just really, uh, honestly, hard to understand them at times. At times. And, and, and that explains. And that explains why. That's rude. rude. That's rude. Right? rude. They speak loud because there's a lot of them. We, so, yeah, and they're what all talking, what? so this they have to... It's getting worse and worse. I don't, because they always go like that when they talk. You know, like, I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, neither one of us is getting... All right, Joe, you're the fucking big shot. Let's, it's let's 17 see. seconds and up. When I went air, that was 17 seconds. Oh. Yeah, and it's a, a horrendous. Do you have a buzzer sound over there, Danny, oh. so we don't have to listen to Joe's version of a woman <laughs> coughing? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> oh all right. All right, what do you got for Joe? All right, for Joe DeRosa. Sweatshops. Do you care? They're so far away, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are very far away. Um, I think it is definitely uh, an unjust policy that's going on over there. And uh, I don't think that it should be happening. But then again, uh, we all need sneakers. So, um, <laughs> you know. Dude, you had it right there. You had it. You should have bailed right there. <laughs> where are the places Man. where there are sweatshops? The Philippines? Oh, there you go. Taiwan? Well, that's I don't know. As long as footlocker's full, I'm cool. Oh, here's I almost a- had a point. I did blow it. That sucks. Right. Here's a good one for you, Bill. Okay, I can do this. Are women funny? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Next one. <laughs> All right, Greer, you're up. That was brilliant. All right. He gets a point for that, right? That was Greer. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Mexicans. Mm-hmm. What's the big deal? They were here first, right? Um... I'm going to have to say, no, they weren't here first. They weren't called Mexicans then. Uh, wow. <laughs> there goes any Tex-Mex, all that shit's gone. Uh, let them go. <laughs> and, and you can, uh, <laughs> let them go. Go back across the border. Jeez, Greer, what Would are you, you running him? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Danny, you're falling asleep at the wheel. Yeah, how far has he got to go before he gets disqualified? <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. All right, Joe. Yes. Why do black guys have to be so loud? I don't know, yeah, but you it's... You should be asking the black man that. It's, it's kind of annoying. I, it's nothing against black guys themselves, but they are loud and they do yell a lot. It's kind of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, not good. I don't be yelling. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, Bill. Yep. At what age does someone become useless, and what should we do about it? Um, I would say 86 if you can't drive. And, come on, dude. I mean, I, I can't even get halfway through it. Who votes after 86? Just to keep score, no points. Nobody has any points right now. You, 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 you got it. You had half a point. All right, this is the last round here. Oh, Jesus All right, Christ, Christ, man. Do you support the troops? Absolutely. I just don't support the war. Oh, mm. dude, you hit. perfect. There you go. Okay. No, that was okay. perfect. That was good. All right. One point for Greer. <laughs> One point for Greer. <laughs> going to be a One black president. Come on, Joe. Step okay, it up. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Gay marriage. Yay or nay? Yay. Of yay. course, I Can think you it buzz makes him more just sense. To say yay. <laughs> 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 yay. It was written in the question, though. Huh? It says yay or nay. And so. Joe wrote the fucking questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Are we still doing this? Let's do really one more quick round, round and then we'll go to the, the porn right. stuff. Uh, Bill, didn't we do more with this land than the Indians ever would have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're getting shit faced out on the fucking uh, <laughs> reservation, so. <I> mean, <laughs> What, you guys don't want honesty in your politician? Okay? I'm Bill Burr. I say how it is. I say how it is. If I you, can't if believe... You, if you can't handle the truth, then I'm not the one that you want to have I as your senator. I can't believe you led that off with, yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> fucking smug prick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, brilliant. All right. All right. So, one more for Greer, one more for me, and okay. we're done. Oh, all right. Uh-oh. Sorry. That's okay. I thought we were stopping Joe, you, after you, this you one. have to win. All right, Greer. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh. Is it time for a female president? Um, absolutely. <laughs> this motherfucker gets all the easy <laughs> no, but he's fucking questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, why not? I mean, You're yeah. You're answering absolutely. honestly, though? I, yeah, absolutely. He's answering easily. No, I'm answering honestly. Well, why okay, not? Really I, believe sure. I believe it. Seriously. I believe it. he's Greer, sincere. Greer, are you currently in a relationship? Yeah. Are you happy? Next See, question. You know, you don't want a female president. <laughs> I was in his fucking Look, water no, gate right just, there. just for the... <laughs> Dude, my relationship dude. has nothing to do with how it feels. No, we're, we're running out of time. We have to get to that point. Just for the warmth oh, that he said who? honestly with. Okay. All right. So, Joe, you think two guys making out is disgusting, don't you? I absolutely do not. I think it's a beautiful thing, and two men should be able to love each other instead of being... <laughs> No, you just lost all the red states. You lost all the fucking red states. Graham Barnes with two points. It's Graham the next Barnes president. wins. Oh, all right. God. We'll be right back with some choice cuts from the motherfucking uninformed mixtape, bitch! Uninformed! Hey, y'all! Welcome back, everybody, to the uninformed mixtape! This episode was pre-recorded like two fucking weeks ago. And why was this show pre-recorded? Because Bill and Joe got shit to do, you dumb skank! Uninformed! Anyways, you hoes probably already know... Bill and Joe always like to welcome a guest on the show to help school their asses with some goddamn knowledge. And this motherfucking episode is no motherfucking exception. On and on. All right, so uh, uh, we're back here. <laughs> Fucking what was chair that? Coll- that chair collapsed a little bit. I got a little too comfortable, Joe. All right. So we're back here, second hour of Uninformed, and uh, this is the hour where me and dumbass Joe DeRosa, who doesn't know where the state of Mississippi is, <laughs> try to actually become informed on uh, on something. I recently got uh, stopped for a uh, to get a ticket or whatever. I was driving on the road. And I, I, you know, I just want to have a, you know, there's just a bunch of stuff going on, like, with the police officers lately. So we just want to actually have an actual police officer in here who was on the job, I don't know how many fucking years, because this is uninformed, and I never even bothered to ask. But we got uh, Lou from uh, the uh, comedy club down the street, which will remain nameless because some of the information we might get from this guy. Lou, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you, How Lou? are you? Great. You're looking, you're looking, uh, you're looking fantastic. Thank you. You too. How long were you on the force for? I did my 20 years. You did your 20 years. Mm-hmm. You had a good time. I had a great time. Where did you? Uh, when, where Where were you a police officer? In uh, primarily, I was a police officer in Queens, but when I got promoted to sergeant, I did the rest of my time in uh, Midtown Manhattan. Oh yeah. When cops, did you ever watch like Fort Apache, The Bronx, and just be like, "This is bullshit. Like this never happened." Like when you watch cop movies, are you like, "These are ridiculous." It no, wouldn't, it wouldn't go down like that. No, not really, because some of them are well-researched. Just they squeeze everything together in two hours or an hour segment. Uh, and that's the only thing that I really find really ridiculous about certain things. Just too much squeezed into a two-hour movie or a one-hour television program. Just combining the things. How about the way they handle their guns? Um, the cops in uh, movie depictions or television depictions always appear to be expert marksmen. when well, we know that's not true. What is what is some of the craziest stuff that you saw in 20 years of being out there? I've I've seen a person's arm twisted around so many times and the handcuffs that looked like he had two left arms on drugs, not oh. feeling it, just twisted around so many times at the shoulder. And, like, cops will run into the uh, lounge in the precinct or run out. you got to see this. And then you're looking, well, what am I looking at? You're looking at two left hands. The arm is twisted around so much. So what, the guy's so high he's trying to get out of the handcuffs? He's or he, he scuffled with the police or got in a fight and they just twisted his arm around and he doesn't even know that his, his arm has been twisted around, uh, you know, at the shoulder. I always thought that was pretty pretty uh, strange. And also a woman who was... Uh, lax- yeah, strange would be a good word. <laughs> that's a, that's sort woman, of odd. A, a, a woman who was... <laughs> a woman who was what? She was uh, lactating. Uh-huh. And she was under arrest. She took out her breast and she squirted uh, mother's milk at the lieutenant behind the desk. That that's pretty <laughs> odd. You know, no one ever sees that. She actually sp- was able. Did to you see it Jesus. starting to happen? And you don't. I was over right. Like, no. I, was, I let it. I didn't even. T- I wanted to see it. I, no one liked the lieutenant anyway. And he got squirted with mother's milk, which is you know, and you know people find these 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 stories really uh, unbelievable. But there's always 19 cops standing right there, and most of them are still alive. What? What's the rank you have to get to before you're like, you know, like Richard Belzer? 
you well, know, he, just he, in the suit, like going around, like doing that shit all day. What, what is that right? Well, he's a, he's probably a first grade detective. He's assigned to you know SUV. Uh, you know, the Special Victims Unit, and um, SVU, I'm sorry. And um, you, you usually get that rank two ways, either through politics right. or through, you know, some type of hard work. That detective rank, you don't have to take a civil service test like you have to for the ranks of sergeant, lieutenant, and captain. You either get it on merit or you did something great and uh, or politics. You know somebody, you get the great unit and you get uh, promoted to detective it's pretty prestigious also to be a first grade detective what's the best way to get out of a ticket I get pulled over a lot and I tried to do like the honesty thing and that, that worked for me for a while and I would actually admit uh, you know why I pulled you over yeah yeah because I was speeding and a lot of times they would just let me go and then I ran into this one guy when I was in Buffalo and he goes you know why he pulled you over I go yeah because I was speeding he goes you have any idea how fast you're going I'm like I don't know 65 he goes yeah this is like a 30 or 35 or something like that. Then when he took my license, he goes, is this your current address? And I was like, no. And he goes, well, how long have you lived in a new address? And I knew what the, the penalty was, but I said, I don't know, about eight months. And the douche came back and he wrote me a ticket for both for both things, which I think went above and beyond. I want to ask you, as a citizen, if I don't yell it at him, can I just still yell cunt sort of like at my windshield? Can I, can I do that? I mean, what, what ends up happening there? I think you're just better off being quiet and taking the ticket. Oh, absolutely. I know that. But I was just really wanting to just yell cunt. I always wanted that, can too. I, like, can what I, are you allowed to yell out, like, without it, it what, being Yeah, considered? like, what exactly is insulting an officer like that well, charges? Well, looking like the way you do, Bill, uh -huh. no one's going to care if you get shot 30 times. What? <laughs> what do you mean? I look like Howdy Doody. Uh, exactly. No one's going to care when they show your high school picture. You know, no one's going to care looking the way you do. Well, this is you know what yeah, the we thing got is? plenty of guys like you around can, here. Can, can I ask you like how how at what age do I have to be before I can actually sit there and go what is your badge number without just getting the <laughs> shit kicked out of me? Because you can't do that in your twenties with like a baseball cap on backwards. I mean, aren't you just gonna you know get your head slammed off the pavement? Then he just tells the judge uh, I felt threatened. <laughs> You know, then you got a felony, and then hopefully your dad has some sort of political position and can get you out of it. I'd feel safer um, questioning a cop in New York City uh -huh. about anything than I would questioning a cop in some place like Buffalo. Oh, really? In Buff Buffalo, they're going to get away with a lot more, less politics. It's not really uh, like New York City, a liberal city. And uh, the cops are probably backed a lot more. So uh -huh. if the cop, you know, smacks the shit out of you. Like I said, looking the way I'll you end look, up no, no one's going to care. So, Just better off take the ticket and walk away. That's so true, dude. Because I went to college at uh, to I went to Kutztown University in Pennsylvania, and it's this little bumfuck town in the middle of like Amish country, basically in Pennsylvania, and. You know, the town itself is probably two miles long, and the entire police force and the one judge in the town were completely in cahoots with the university. And the university, when they cracked down on student partying, they, you know, they went right to the police force. The police would come through. They would, they were doing so much shit that was just completely illegal. Like they were literally, like they'd look through peepholes in your door to try to see what was going on in your apartment before they came in, which is completely illegal. But there was nothing you could do. They'd look through the people. They could have put shit. hockey tape over the fucking well, door hole. I, I was bastard. high half the time. I didn't, you know, I wasn't that inventive. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, there was nothing you could do. There were these peepholes, <laughs> and uh, you know, I didn't have anything that you couldn't yeah, see through. I'm like, like in it was my 1984. Apartment. You know, <laughs> do you have any razor blades? I'm out. The, uh, yeah. So the, um, they, but but there was there was you were just fucked, and it was like I remember getting I got a noise violation. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon for something, and I was just like, what are you, out of your mind? It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I went to the judge, and they were, I mean, in more or less words, they were like, go fuck yourself. There's nothing you can do about this. We, you, there's no way you can fight this. You're going to have to pay. And it was, you were, you were helpless, man, like completely helpless because it was a one-horse town where everybody knew everybody. And what you're saying is it's easier for that kind of stuff to happen in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, and it happens all the time, and you don't hear about it. I had one time I was doing a college gig in the middle of Colorado, and I drove like an hour in the wrong direction. So I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere in the Rockies, so I start driving back trying to make up. I basically have to drive two hours round trip to get back to where the fuck I started to get to this gig. So I'm flying, and all of a sudden, this guy in like a Bronco 
literally almost coming the other way, almost runs me off the road. And I see like the little blue light on the dashboard. It's one of those things. He's almost like a pizza delivery guy where they can't afford like a like a real police car, so they use his vehicle. That's probably how he got on the force. He gets out of the car. He doesn't even have the whole cop uniform. He just has his shirt tucked into his these Wrangler jeans. And I'm literally sitting there going like, for all I know, this guy isn't a fucking cop. And he comes up and he just punches my window. And he's like, get it out! Like yelling about my insurance. And right there, I just want to be like... No, fuck that. You drive away. No way, dude. Drive no. away, dude. That guy probably would have put two in the back of my head. I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere. And nobody would have cared, Bill, exactly. if you were dead. Looking the way I look. <laughs> I was thinking we could take care of this right here yeah. in Brainerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're finished. They, yeah, there would there be nothing. You're fucked in that situation. So there's no way. Like, I was wondering, like, if... So the best thing is just to keep your damn mouth shut because I just really wanted to say to that guy, like, you know... Did you, the, the guy in, like, Buffalo, where he wrote me the extra ticket for my license, it's like, do you have some sort of, like, uh, I don't know, policeman ball coming up where you need to ra raise fucking money or something? You, you really, you try to be, like, yeah. top of the month? Is that true when they say they give out more tickets at the end of the month because they're trying to make the quota? Absolutely true. We don't call it a quota, though. We change it. We call it productivity goals. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, that's no, nice. we can't use the word. What's the dumbest quota. thing you ever wrote a ticket for? We just like this is such bullshit. When I first became a, a cop, you know, you, you you really want to do the right thing. Uh -huh. You really think you you know you can enforce everything, traffic laws, penal law. There used to be a summons, wheels not to curb. So if your wheels didn't face the curb with your parked car, you can get a summons for that. Uh -huh. And I used to, they wanted our productivity productivity goals were 20 or 25 a month. I would actually go down a whole block and write 25 wheels not to curb just to be done. Just to get it out of just the way? Just to get done. So people, and and they, took, they actually took it out because it caused a lot of problems. And there was another... Um, That's like that Al Capone shit, how they finally ended up getting him tax evasion yep. instead yeah. of murder. And then yeah. know, another one was um, uh, the vehicle is is over 12 inches from the curb, mm -hmm. and they actually took both of these summonses out, and you know the cops could no longer uh, be allowed to write them because it would cause trouble. The people right. would come out and can't believe it, and then it would escalate. It would always, and they they look at it, it would <clears> spiral <throat> and escalate into something it shouldn't. Let's take these out of there because they are, after all, they are really stupid, and we see that. It's, it, some cops are forced to make an arrest stemming from a stupid summons. The people right. would come out or they'd come, well, are you kidding me, officer? Right. Oh, your, your tires were not facing the curb. But no one tells you that when you're new. Right. You, you learn. You really learn. But you had to admit when you're walking down the street, you know you're kind of like... Oh, I know. I, were you, know, you laughing? Did you go back to the like the police house I, and you start know what? cracking up? Well, no, I'm, I'm done for the day. No, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Then you, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm, you know, it says on the card that I could do that. It says uh -huh. right there. Take me. You take your nightstick out, and you know that the the car is over twelve inches from the the curb, and you just or the wheels are pointing out. You do the boss hog shit, putting down the fake fire hydrant. Oh, that's, and there is no, that's two on a bus right there. Geek, geek, geek. You, 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 you the, pl the police administration will always tell you there's not a quota, but uh -huh. they're full of it because if a cop is working Monday through Friday with weekends off, uh -huh. somehow that cop always seems to make his quota his pro productivity goals because he has weekends off and he doesn't right. want to lose that right so whatever the police department is saying you you have to do this, this is what we want some cops resist it but they end up getting the, sh the shitty details and the shitty uh, uh days off and th that's what happens the animosity stems from that um, al along the police department because some guys we call it prostitute yourself for right. for a saturday and sunday off would you would you let a guy um, out of a ticket if he cried because I got out of a ticket like that once. <laughs> I, I, I cried tell you, in, in Virginia. There are people you stop that you just like immediately. Okay, this you is just, well, this is good. You shit. just like them. This is good shit. You okay? just as soon as you're talking to Bill, like Bill, looking the way you look, I know I would like you right away. Okay. What about me? Yeah, and you too. <laughs> you know, and you too. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Just, <laughs> such a need to be. He was adopted. And that's the key. Always, you know, you know trying to <laughs> bring up childhood issues. What about me? You're How come no friendly. one ever loves me? <laughs> I got pulled over for a seatbelt uh, violation yesterday uh -huh. when I was driving into the city. And okay. uh, I just got myself like a PBA card. It was my first one ever. But I don't know the protocol yeah, what's, on, I, on how to use that. And it ended up fucking me in the long run because the guy, I gave him my license without showing him the card. So he goes back into the car, his squad car, and I think he's just going to run my license, run my place, and then yeah. come back 
and if he's going to give me a ticket, he's going to come back to my window and give me the ticket. So he comes back with the ticket already filled out, but now I'm holding the card, and he goes, why didn't you show me that before? Uh, like I'm supposed to know. I'm like, I don't get pulled yeah, over like all the time. Yeah, but now you know it. I'm going to tell you, if you have anything like that, break out with it. Don't give me your license. I, I felt break like it out was, with that I stuff. Felt like that's, it, that's how you do it, because I ended up getting one through this show. You know, actually, the Opie and Anthony show, I ended up getting one of those cards. Now, do those cards work nationally? Is that like, or is it like a nah, gym I, membership? I got to go to my gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you can join an organization called uh, the Fraternal Auto Police (FOP) as an associate member, even if you're a civilian. And those ID cards that you get seem to work better nationally, uh, because in Florida, most of the cops are sick of New York City cops coming down there and getting drunk and violating, you know, the law. The local, just violating everything. <laughs> After a while, and you know, a lot of the the cops. Yeah, we saw the guy gonorrhea stats earlier in the show. <laughs> Florida's right up there with Mississippi, which Joe now knows is right next to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in my life, I know where Mississippi is, so I can fucking avoid it. So anyway, so you, you're saying so that if if you buy, how, how do I get into this club? How do I buy in? I want in. Well, yeah. I'm a made guy. Well, that's like it. Did you see the Hoffa? Did you ever see the movie Hoffa where he gives Danny DeVito the he gives him one of his business cards that says James R. Hoffa on the back? He just writes in pencil, "Give this man anything he wants," and he just fucking <laughs> <laughs> he just shows yeah, it that's everywhere, the kind of card I want. and everybody's like, "Oh!" And they buy it because he couldn't have possibly crafted this on his own. <laughs> but that's I always felt like that's what one of those cards would do. Like it would just get you out of any. Fucking situation that you you know you get pulled over you fly, like why well, let, let's take it like one step at a time to to get into the uh, the fraternal oh, order, please. order of police uh, how do you, you can go on the internet and join do you, well, you I, I would where, where I live huh I would go to the precinct and find out if the local precinct has uh, their own. Oh God! I gotta go talk to somebody. No, I want to do this like over the you phone. You could go on, on, online also and find which one is close to you, and they'll tell you where to send the money. They send you stickers and a little badge and life insurance. You know, uh -huh. it's it's and you're an associate. And you go to a gay club and dress up like a cop. No, you, I know where this is going. You're you're an associate <laughs> member. You're, you're a civilian, but it's it's a good thing to have. It's not it's not going to give you carte blanche. It's if you were going a little bit too fast, you you went through a stop sign. Yeah, that was the thing. I was going to like the parameters. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't a, break out yeah, one yeah. of those after you snatched a. I was just going to say, like, you ah, ah, I got a car. You can't but, be standing over a body with yeah. three bullets in the back of his. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> but I, but I got to tell you, if you did do something that was really severe and they were going through your ID they uh, and they see it, they won't acknowledge that you have the PVA cards or the police or another police officer's business card. But if you get arrested, they, they can't let you go, but they, they will do something like give you your own cell. Ah, that is important if you get arrested, See, you know especially on the weekend. Literally, joining one of those could actually prevent you from being raped. Yeah, well, so that's I'm, what we learned. You today. need that's, if you get arrested on the weekends, you need the, to have your own cell. You can rest before arraignment, uh -huh. and you know you don't have to sleep with your eyes open. I had and, no idea how Bill, dangerously I've been living all these yep, years. And looking the way you look on the weekends. <laughs> You'll be in a giant holding tank with a lot of bears, giant bears, big giant bears. Steve the bear, you gonna be in there? <laughs> Looking the way you look. And you'll have no sneakers, your shirt will be gone. Nothing would make me happier than watching surveillance footage of six bears just descending on Burr's asshole. <laughs> me getting mauled? So, the joy. I would, it'd be like in Menace to Society, I'd be showing the fucking tape to all my boys. <laughs> you see the tape? <laughs> All right, we want oh, to how, how often did, let me say how often does uh cuz what I've learned through like certain comedians who actually have records and shit there's a difference between jail and prison. Like jail is just, you know, when you go to jail that's just kind of like some like is that like when uh you maybe have a little domestic violence dispute with your girl and uh they just kind of hold you down at the police station. Is there like a difference like I know there's like there's like Leavenworth there's like hardcore prisons sure. there's lighter prisons but is like is there something that is just sort of like, um, like sometimes like guys get arrested and they, ah, yeah, I was in jail for three days and they don't have to go back. Like the shit is over. Mm -hmm. Like what, what exactly kind of, what kind of law do you break when, when you just kind of have like one of those things? Oh. Like you hear guys, they've been arrested 38 times and it's like, what happened to three time loser? Well, it wasn't a felony, you know? Oh, well, Rikers Island, you can be held uh, up to a year. And then if the courts deem that you have to be further incarcerated, they'll move you upstate. 
Uh -huh. So, you know, to any Sing Sing, Asaneng, uh, Danamora, Attica, there are tons of uh, uh, places upstate where they would house you if you did but, something. But say, say like if you get into a fight in a bar, right, mm -hmm. on 8th mm -hmm. Avenue, you mm -hmm. fight some other, you know, frat kid because he grabbed your girl's ass, you can't prove it or something, like I'm innocent in this story, right? You beat the shit out of each other, and then you both get a, b both are pressed and charges, whatever. You both get arrested. What kind of jail am I going to? You're not actually going to take me to Rikers, are you? No. I'm, you, I'm gonna you go to the you'll be at, if it happens in a bar in Manhattan, Manhattan Central Booking, which is downtown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, each uh, uh, precinct has a holding cell. Right. And basically, if you haven't you don't have a record or any warrants, they want to arraign you before a judge. Right. And it's like, let's make a deal. If we let you go now, will you come back? If we let you go, you won't get arrested again. Um, if we let you go, do you want to come back with your own attorney? Mm -hmm. and, th and they have your fingerprints come back, and then they look um, at your record. And if you don't have any, you're going to be out the door. But you can end up in the system, especially, let's say, a Thursday night for four days. You can end up between the precinct and Manhattan Central Booking. Just because it's a busy time? It's busy on the weekends. And it's, and that's another thing. If you know a cop, you can have your arraignment pushed up also because I've done that. We, so basically the time to sucker punch somebody would probably be a Monday through a Wednesday is best, what you're saying. The best time. Weekends are unbelievable. And right. plus uh, you, have, you have less assistant district attorneys working. Uh -huh. On the midnight shift. So what is? Wait, you just said you can end up in a system. What did you just say? The system. The system. But what were you? And Joe, looking the way you do, <laughs> which is a what very, you, very reoccurring theme on I this. I think this is a chance. And you know what, Joe? Nothing something. would make me feel better to see a half Egyptian <laughs> getting shipped out to Rikers Island. I just want the footage of your face as you're driving in the, over that bridge yeah, right by LaGuardia. When I'm the first Egyptian to be jailed there, and they're all waiting, <laughs> you know, like it's a new meal on the menu. <laughs> we ain't never had Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> they just fucking line up to get a taste. Can you yeah. can you get arrested for like a bar fight and just be such a dick that they end up sending you to Rikers? Like, have you ever seen somebody like who's just throwing gas on the fire where it's like, dude, you literally would you would like would have been the scenario you said where you would have got arraigned, you would have been out of here in, in a couple of hours, and next thing you know, you're you're in a knife fight in like fucking sing sing. Like, what's the worst case scenario? Well, if if I, I I arrested a guy and he was a complete asshole, the first thing you do from the scene. Mm -hmm. You bring him to the hospital, and that's going to add a day, maybe uh -huh. a day and a half to his incarceration. You bring him to the hospital, you think that he's mentally unfit. You're supposed to be the expert as a cop. You can tell right. if the guy's crazy. You could tell if the guy's hurt, and they mm -hmm. really don't want you to bring him to the precinct if he's acting in an irrational manner or he's really hurt. But even if it's on the fence, whether he's crazy or whether he's hurt, you could fuck him by bringing him to the hospital. But isn't the hospital better than being in no. the with the no. bears? And, the, and then yeah, he's <laughs> own bed? It adds a day to your time in the system. It's a day later that you'll be arraigned. It's a day later that you know you'll get to central booking from the hospital. Oh, I get it. You make them think like you're icing a field goal kicker. Uh, you, you make them sit in the hospital sit, and think about going to jail. System. And especially if it's a psycho ward, um, you have to wait for the shrink to come and evaluate him. And that take that could take a day. And now now he's in a padded cell. Uh, awaiting a Raymond, and he's not that crazy. And you're fucking him. You were a wise ass. You resisted me putting the hand. Do you peek on. in through the little uh, square window and laugh at him? It, it's, <laughs> yeah, I have antagonized people on purpose. You have. Let oh, me hear some of these stories. Sure. Um, I, I've, I've teased people and, and t antagonized them. I had. What do you give us here? Well, I actually had a, a, a woman who was tearing her own hair out of her head. Hilarious. On, on the top of. Always it. funny. And what's you know, great and. Um, there was a female sergeant. I was a cop at the time, and she wanted to handle it. After all, she was a woman, and I'm with mm -hmm. my partner. And the woman's pretty. She's good looking. She has big breasted and panties, tearing the hair out of her head and throwing it at us. Top. Wait, of wait. Head. Big breasted and panties. She's no, not wearing a skirt. She's, she's wearing panties. Okay, she's got pants. Let's let's paint the picture here. She got panties on. She's wearing a shirt. No. High heels. No shoes. No okay, shirt. Bare, barefoot. Panties, bra, tearing her no, hair. Out. No bra. Bare-breasted. I think I saw this episode on cops, and, okay? And tearing her hair. She had like a failed relationship or something, and she was tearing her hair out of her head and throwing it at us. So, you know, there's bits of hair and blood everywhere. <laughs> and the, uh, fe of course, the female sergeant, she wanted to... Sh <laughs> How do you not laugh in that situation? That's got to be... Well, you do. And I, let me finish the story, because the <laughs> female sergeant wouldn't let the male cops go up and get this woman. She had to do it. And she went up and took a punch in the face... And she ended up going right down the stairs and hurting herself. Oh. And then, of course, we I went right up there, and, and uh, I just picked the lady up and threw her right down the stairs. <laughs> I threw her down the stairs, <laughs> cuffed her, and she was, like, wildly out of controls. And I had to smack her because she's kicking me and punching me and trying to... Uh, 
How did you do it? Did you do a classy backhand can, can or I, closed I, fisted? I, I don't want to. You know what? You don't want. She's still a woman, even though she's crazy. You know, you're stronger than her, but she just would not. You know, let herself be put under control. Let me interject just yeah. for a second. Let's just be honest for a second here. How fucking good must that feel when, for the first time in your life, you're allowed to hit a woman in the fucking face? <laughs> <laughs> you're just finally allowed to be like, really? <laughs> and just fucking really, finally, you're just like, fucking finally. A little fucking just, evening of the I, field all, here. All human beings are, are the same. It's fun sometimes to hit anybody. Right. You know, especially if they're pissing you off or trying to hurt you. So, yeah. to make a long story short, with this woman, uh, we get her to the Elmhurst uh, uh, psycho ward, and she's whispering something to the doctor when he's trying to talk to her. She's in a straight jacket. And the doctor <laughs> leans over. Clumps of hair, Mr. And she says, the doctor's kind of, you know, is there anything wrong with you? She said, she, she, she nods the doctor to look at me, and she says, uh, he's crazy. <laughs> oh, she said it about you? Yeah. He's the crazy one. And I, I thought that was very perceptive of her because it's true. And I've got to admit, Lou, you you got a look in your eye. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. It works. <laughs> it works. It's a good look. It's a deterrent. It's why I do what I do. Was was it something that you just just became over years of seeing fucked up shit that you got the look kind of like it's, the, the you, it's, 200 yards I'm, stare? You become an actor. Have? It's all pretend. It's really pretend. My wife will say, don't let anybody uh, hear you talk. Uh, they'll know you're a teddy bear. Don't let anybody hear you talk. They'll know you're really nice. And, you, you know, I do security and bodyguard and protective and police work my whole life. So it's a lot of pretending. i got to be honest with you. For the minute I heard you speak, I've been saying that to everybody. That man is a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go the other route. I'm not, you know what it is? Because you, you kind of came in. I've never seen you in, like, the, uh, daylight. i got to admit, I always see you down the club. Sure. You always look great down there. And, of course, there. you know, looking the way I look. Yeah, looking the way you uh, look. <laughs> that, that, that works for me. That you know works for me. I know exactly what I look like, and I, I, you know, I do security at a comedy club, and I can use the way I look to help me. Doing security at a comedy club as opposed to being a cop. Do you feel like now, like you went from like the NBA to like the CBA? You know what I'm saying? It's like no, the, absolutely it's the not. Competition it's, it's a lot less. A wonderful job. Uh huh. I, you know, I, I get to meet you guys. Right. And um, although is it's, that a backhanded it's, compliment? It's, 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 <laughs> a, it's a, a security. I try to guess who's gonna you know make the big time. Uh -huh. And I suck up to them. And, uh, <laughs> security someday. Which is why he hasn't been speaking to me that much at the club. <laughs> well, you actually had an interesting thing happen the other night because I know every once in a while somebody acts up down at the club. And uh, uh, what was it? The last comic standing yes. auditions were down there. Yes. And uh, they basically, was it was it during the day or was it at night? Where it, I was, guess you had a it was auditions during the day. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, he started out sane. He was a comic. And uh, the judges liked him. In the beginning, um, they were gonna, you know, uh, let him continue. But then he just got bizarre, and they actually got frightened. He just started Bizar bizarre, how? Screaming, yelling, thrashing about, falling down, totally incoherent. <laughs> I think that's that's called out of material. And uh, of course, they call me, <laughs> and I, all I did was gently put my hand on his elbow, and he fell down like he was on fire. The whole thing's being filmed for television. So this, this is going to be Jesus on Last Christ. Comic Standing. You, yes. You, so now I pick the guy up and I have him in a bear hug. And of course, he can't get out. He's trying to. But each time he struggles, it, it's less of a chance. It's like him. a boa constrictor. He couldn't believe just, me. getting tighter. He couldn't breathe. It just kept, Every time he's trying to breathe, he couldn't breathe. So, um, of course, the cameras, they come right in with the cameras because it's great television. And I think they picked me up saying to the guy, uh, you're on live television. And your friends are going to witness you catching a beating from someone double your age, and then he, and then he calmed down. So we can see this on last comic. Oh yeah, it's going. Oh, you know, they made me sign, the, you know, this disclaimers right away. I hardly was done with putting the guy out onto the street, and the uh, the, the, <laughs> the people were shoving the, the paperwork in my uh, face to sign. Sign this, you know. Ah, uh, reality uh, shows. Yeah, exactly. That's just how much money would I would have had. To, to give you just to put Ant into a chokehold for no good reason, just because I would just love to see it. Well, the, he was actually afraid at a few points where he actually needed me to walk him into the green room, and at the yeah, which is amazing because you think if you act like a complete cocksucker to people and treat them like dog shit. You know, you'd have no problems walking around a room. Yeah, Joe, Joe kind of has, has issues with uh, being judged by uh, someone of the caliber of Ant. 
I, uh, and I'm speaking just for myself here. I'm not, uh, my Joe DeRosa's views on Ant do not represent the views <laughs> of Uninformed or XM Radio. The, uh, but anyway, they I do represent the point of view of just about every comic. Oh my God! It's they, they so you had thing. to you had to walk him. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna play some pieces yeah. from this podcast later that I did okay. where we kind of uh, where I kind of tracked. Yeah, yeah. Him. We we gotta let the audience know what's going on. Joe actually was one of the uh, I don't know forty three or forty four hundred people who went down and auditioned for Last Comic <laughs> Standing, <laughs> and uh, Joe I guess didn't have a good experience <laughs> so much to the point that he uh, spouted off in a podcast that can be heard on uh, Cringe Humor. CringeHumor.net, he, he a 60-minute podcast. He, he played, yeah, 60 minutes. Of, <laughs> 60 minutes, he goes off on his three-minute audition. And I'm listening to the thing. I thought it was going to be like, and that ant's a fucking cunt. And, and it isn't. He's speaking. He sounds like he's on Meet the Press. <laughs> We're going to play that a little bit later on in the show. We should do, um, before we, yeah, before we go to that, we should do the perfect murder thing. Because we thought it'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Billy and I were thinking of... We wanted to. T we wanted you to sort of be a judge in this. We devised ways in which we would murder one another. And we tried to come up with the perfect murder to execute on... Yeah, because we're, we're always watching these things on TV. And it's like the, the, the technology to capture somebody, it's almost like not even fair anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's like watching the Yankees play the Pirates or something. You <laughs> yeah. know? Like with like the helicopters. Like first of all, what percentage, because when you watch like those A&E like murder mystery things, you know, and they look at uh, uh, somebody's, somebody's, the imprint of somebody's face in like a garbage bag and they figure out that they've been like suffocated and stuff. Is it like, uh, um, like what percentage of murder, if you watch that stuff, you feel like, oh my God, you could never get away with murder. But the re isn't the reality... I mean, how, how many of, like, what percentage of murders do you think actually well, get solved? Well, the first thing uh, the investigative body looks at is, uh, when they have a homicide, is people close. Mm -hmm. Husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, children, uh, neighbors, friends. And normally that's who you get killed by, someone you know. Right. If you guys are looking to do the perfect murder, you can't kill one another. You have to kill a random stranger, and then you'll never get caught. Right. If you can keep your mouth shut and you just kill Which a random... Which is why I think my way of killing him is, is going to work, because <laughs> I'm not going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna wait till I get to a level in this business, which might take, I don't know, 30 years, <laughs> where I have such fanatical fans. And there's so many psychos on MySpace that I can somehow convince one of them through some sort of, like, mind trick that Joe DeRosa is out to get me. And I'm, it's it's just like the fucking Oswald thing. I'm gonna get a guy who's half fucking loony, and that's what that's how you do it, right? And I'll, I'll get him or her to somehow kill Joe, and because that you'll clearly be crazy, then I'll just be I I have no fucking idea, I, I, you know? Yeah, but the, wouldn't there I mean, be that's documents? That's pretty fleshed out, isn't it? <laughs> wouldn't there be documents? Any murder plan that just ends with uh, and uh, you know? I mean, I think it's a pretty good indication I mean, you're would, gonna get caught. But but there would be accounts of you speaking to them about it. I know, but I would only speak to him face to face. That's what I'm saying. Then they could go to the police and go, he told me he wanted me to kill him. And then I'd say, no, I'm not this person. No, I didn't. This person's crazy. <laughs> why, never did, met no, why did you just go, nuh uh? <laughs> <laughs> prove That's it. the worst fucking prove it, defense prove it I've ever heard. Nuh uh. <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, she can just say that she fucking talked to me. And then I say, no, you didn't. She doesn't have any fucking witnesses. That's basically what it is. You talked to me. No, no, no I didn't. Well, where are you going to talk to her? You got to meet her somewhere. I'll meet her at a fucking show. Joe, is this is fantasy. It's all working out in my head. Mine's better. Well, listen. Let's oh wait, yeah, punch holes in his, or 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 but, don't. Well, Maybe well, it's good. It, it, the direction I'm going is I'm finding somebody who's already half fucking crazy, which I think would kind of uh, insulate me, wouldn't it? Because my whole defense can be like, I don't know what this person's talking about. They're fucking crazy. And I love Joe DeRosa. He was one of my favorite <laughs> human beings on the planet. <laughs> I would think if you're gonna kill somebody, first and foremost. Never talk about it. So it's already too late. Right. You can't really kill him because you've talked about it. I would never want to kill Joe. I, I, he's not. But a, like we he's, have to. He's not a threat to me on any level. Yeah, we have to approach this as. <laughs> <laughs> we have to approach this. What a dick, right? We have to approach this as if we're not talking about this right now. <laughs> well, once again, looking the way you guys look, how important. Um, are the detectives on the scene when they're looking at the way you look lined in chalk, of course, at the crime scene? Right. How important are they going to deem, you know, their investigation? 
You well, know. Were, you, were you one of the guys, like, as far as, like, the level of, uh, the, like, your job at the police force, were you the guy going, get out of my crime scene, or were you the guy fucking up the crime scene? Uh, but I, I was a, a, my, by the end of my career, I was a supervisor, and uh -huh. actually, you know, I was in plain clothes for half of my career, but to be closer to home, I actually went back into the bag, back into uniform. Uh -huh. and, um, the bag, why do they call it the bag? A, I don't know, because it's a bag, I guess. I, I don't really don't know, it's just... Just terminology. The term they used and back you in the no bag. Idea what it meant. Yeah, back in the bag, and I guess after a while, uniform looks like a bag. It's just kind of hanging off your body. You stop washing it. You just wear the same thing every day. You don't uh -huh. care. But um, you're like the waiter that's been at the restaurant for too long, <laughs> and he looks you know, at write shit down anymore. Yeah, well, before I retired, I was definitely there too long. But um, how I, much I, pussy did you get as a cop? Wait a second. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Wait. We're getting way off the perfect murder thing here. We'll get back to it. Yeah. The pussy's important. Let's get to that. Yeah, let's get to I the pussy. pussy. I want to say I'm going to murder you, though. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> this is, uh, all right. Caroline's Comedy Club. All right. Have you been there? It's close to here. There's a huge flight of steps going down to the club. Huge. <laughs> if you fell down them, you'd be dead. Not so, true. I saw Jimmy Martinez do it. <laughs> <laughs> but he had on a big Char winter coat. <laughs> Charles Walden fell down those steps, the crippled comic. <laughs> and he's got cerebral palsy, and he fell down the fucking steps. <laughs> and Keith Robinson... <laughs> <laughs> like was, Keith and Patrice took him to the hospital, and Keith's going, "God damn, Charles, you can't go walking around like you're normal. <laughs> you got to be careful going down steps." <laughs> so my plan is, Billy, Billy, and I are going into Caroline's because we have a show together one day there, right? And as he. Steps down to the first step. I throw marbles under his feet, and he and he falls down. I pick up the marbles. Billy fell down the steps. What are you, a little rascal? <laughs> it was a tragedy. He's dead. First of all, his That's is stupid. Flawless. Dude, you're at the scene of the crime. You're an idiot. Who's going to think I threw marbles down? I don't Nobody know. would ever guess the that. The lady sitting in the ticket booth at the top of the stairs? It'll be a late show when when that lady's not in the booth anymore. Oh, okay. On the 12.30. Okay, and then Louie's there, and I roll down the stairs, and they hear <laughs> of all the fucking marbles <laughs> hitting the... Bu Carpeted there. steps. There'd be no... <laughs> no, there's, but there's wood on wood paneling on the side, and marbles bounce. And don't tell me they don't, because I know they do. A couple marbles, dude. Nobody would ever... Nobody... I, I, I think that's flawless. Well, listen, Lou, you got to admit, if, if you want to get away with the murder, uh, isn't it better to try to get somebody sort of anonymous to do it for you, to no. at least not put yourself no. at the scene? No, you never add any people into it. Ever. Okay. You, you do it. You don't talk about it. You just do it. Okay, you do it. But do you and do, you leave, it, do, you leave you do the it at your place of work? You Well, if, if you decide to do it, uh, I would never... No, but if you're going to kill somebody, they stay where you kill them. There's none of this transporting in your car, hiding the body, chopping right. the body up. If you kill it, it stays where it is, because then you have less chance of getting caught. They can't use scientific evidence against you either. Right. What if I went to the Grand Canyon with him... And it was just me and him out on the rim, and I pushed him over the edge. Would they be able to tell, like, through forensics, he was pushed, he didn't fall? No. But Yeah, but, they would. They would have seen the scuff marks no, on my feet going, no, Joe, 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 Joe! Well, it depends on... <laughs> it really depends on how good the, te the detectives are interrogating you. If two very good New York City detectives would have interrogated OJ, and I could have been one of them, I know I could have gotten him to confess without laying a hand on him. Mm -hmm. you, it's just the cops out there seem to be... In awe of the celebrity affair, and they treated him like he was. Uh, it's kind of like LA Comics. Yeah. They they stink. Uh, and, well, the, like the, the bottom line is, <laughs> they they, they, they could have got this guy. He was so distraught when he first got arrested, he would have confessed. And they didn't they didn't in interrogate him the right, right way. They just let him get away with it. You know how yeah. that's how I knew OJ did it because when they handcuffed him, he didn't look like a guy who just found out a woman he loved yep. had been killed. And not only that, yep. he was being charged with it. He looked like, oh, man, what the fuck did I just do? Yeah. yeah. I, I would have said, OJ, you were my hero. I watched you run in the snow. 2,000 yards. Me, my dad and my, and, my, and my brother, we cried. That was the greatest thing to watch OJ running in the snow. What happened? She wouldn't let you go to the recital, and you got mad. God, my wife pisses me off so much. I want to kill her also, and I would have pet him. And he would have cried. I would have had him cry, and he would have... I know every good New York City detective would have had that guy. That, that's the way you would approach him? Oh, that's exactly. Was, was, was that your general approach exactly. that you took with I, people? I, or? Well, I knew he did it from the moment. From the moment I heard, I knew he did it. 
And everybody knows he did it. Even like the black community starting to, to think that way also. You hear it in their sentiment that this is how they believe now. In the beginning, of course, you know, because the, uh, the detective there uh, used the N-word, um, they, they, uh, I think his name is... Um, Furman. Yeah, Furman, well, that tends yeah. to throw a wrench in your case. Yeah, well, when you, you finally convict a black guy and the other guy's every other it's, word of yeah. his mouth and he's not rapping yep. is the n-word <laughs> and, and you know what and, and, and it's a college educated guy a good looking guy a smart guy uh -huh. who in selected circles is using the n-word which everyone does anyway you know in selected circles we do you know sneak in that word you know we all do it you know and um i really do believe that good new york city detective because i got you're saying we all do what cops all do it is what you're saying or uh, people people People, uh, people. I, don't know. I, I kind of hate kind of I, out of that circle. I, you know what? I kind of, I, I kind of, I, I'm sick of the word. I hate the word. I'm retired for six years now, so I don't hear it as much as I did. And I, right. I, I don't really like the word. It's, it's just we should do something about it. I just, I just don't like it. I think it's more. Con I think. All right, you know what? I, we're gonna have to take a break here, oh. and uh, we'll be back with more, uh, more cop talk. With Lou Talano Jr. Yeah, and we're also going to do the uh, the spelling bee, right? Yep, spelling bee's coming up later. Okay, cool. Okay, great, Joe. Thanks for making <laughs> a nice smooth transition and and fucking it up. I yeah, we're also going to do something else in fucking an hour. I thought we that were really didn't need to be brought up. I now. thought we were. You're listening to Uninformed <laughs> and stammering Joe DeRosa. We'll be right back with some choice cuts from the motherfucking Uninformed mixtape. Uninformed. It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Lou is literally telling us stories like during the break, like Buddy Hackett in the old Carson <laughs> days. Just telling us great stories. Lou, we got, we got to have you back. But before you go, uh, just to, we always have to demonstrate to our fans what fucking idiots we are. And uh, I just realized lately, you know, what a bad speller I am. And I've been giving Joe such shit of how he can't pick out Mississippi on a map that we're actually going to have a spelling bee. We yeah. figured... Why not? Why not keep you around? A guy who actually had the legal right to shoot somebody and punch a woman in the face and throw her down the stairs. Well, we actually, all of see. us really have that right, depending on the scenario. Everybody in this room has the right to do that, depending on the scenario. I have one question: When? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to know. When? When, when can I, I? I want the list of scenarios in a pamphlet that I can huh? carry out of my wallet. Yeah, at what moment on the date that's not going well do I know that I can actually throw the girl down a flight of stairs? I think when she goes, I thought we were just friends. When well, she I, says I think that. Uh, no. When she goes, Olive Garden. <laughs> you remember the Bobbits, of course, right? Yes. Yeah. There's your scenario. The girl cuts your cock off and you slap her. I think the Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. I, you know what? Then I don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to hit a woman. I just think it's like in a Three Stooges way. It's kind of funny. But if that's how far you got to go, I mean, that's the last thing I'd be thinking of if my yeah. cock is laying in a field somewhere. <laughs> Listen, you it's, should never hit a woman, but if you see it, you got to admit there's a part of it that's kind of funny. Uh, thanks, McGruff. <laughs> especially, no, you know what? I've just lately people just been coming at me just saying, ah, oh, you fucking hate women, you blah, blah. I just more say shit because I just think the Well, especially if the woman is Paris Hilton. Nobody thinks you should. Oh, hit there a woman. you go. There you go. No, one, everyone would love that. You yeah. probably hurt your hand. She's so <laughs> bony. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the. Uh, I guess uh, Danny Boy has coming up with uh, with a list of words that yeah. are commonly used words that you actually try to impress people and maybe could actually get you laid if a girl's into an intelligent person, but you can't even fucking spell the word. I'm making a prediction right now because I know that you're a shit speller. That this is where I'll redeem myself because with the map bullshit. That this is where I'll show that I. Yeah, but I have an I have an excuse why I'm such a bad speller before we even get into it. What? what? Uh, it was the system, man. <laughs> I was no, lost this, in the this, system, no, man. No, this is what happened. You know, they, they start teaching you how to read and write, you know, in first grade, second grade, third grade. So I learned all these words. They were fresh in my head, okay? New knowledge, okay? And in fourth grade, for some reason, they stopped teaching us how to spell the words that they taught us. They, they wanted to teach us how to spell them uh, phonetically. So all of a sudden, they were teaching us, you know, cat, C-A-T, was now K-A-T, and you had to learn all these words that you just got in your head. You had to learn how to spell them phonetically. So that mismatch of shit was in my head, and I never fucking recovered. Because after fifth grade, you don't have spelling what anymore. goofy fucking school did you go to when uh, they did that? I don't know. It was stupid. <laughs> this is bad, dude. I went to in the early 70s. They're giving us tang because the astronauts were drinking it. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? So that's my excuse. That's all like right. you taught some kid two plus two is four. The next year, you're like, it's five. It's five, and then you just got it. That well, in your they head. did that in my school. They burned all the maps one year. I don't know why. They just did that, and they 
They said, You're not uh, a good liar, Joe. I can, you know what? I'm going to use lose word here. I can fucking look into your I'll never soul. forget. I went in first day of third grade, and there was a fire, of, and it was all maps, and the teacher yeah. was going, These maps are cunts. <laughs> you should have gone with someone who beat it. you with a globe. That's a David <laughs> Tell joke. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate to travel because my father used to beat me with a globe. Oh. <laughs> all right. I got a little Carlos Mencia in me. All right. <laughs> So I wasn't saying, like, you bit it. I was just saying, like, that's why. Oh, I, it's a line from his act. Yeah. Okay. How are we going to work the spelling bee? I'll throw out the word, and then, Bill, if you have get you it. Have you ever seen it? Have you ever been no. involved in a spelling bee? Did yeah, when I, was, when, I was, when I was 10. This is the right, worst. Right, and there was a teacher, and <laughs> she would just that. read the words. That, you know how many beers ago that was? <laughs> and, and we, go ahead. You know what? Just read a fucking word, <laughs> and, and keep you'll, score. you'll see, you'll see he, how it goes. If he can't get it right, then it goes to me. If I can't get it right, it goes to Lou. And then if Lou can't no, get it right. No, you get a new word. That's not how it works. It oh, wait, a, yeah, you're right. You're no, right, wait, you're right, you're I right. think it is how it works. <laughs> but it's not fair, because if you spell it wrong and you fuck it up, then that gives me the advantage to try but to... But you know what, Joe? Life isn't fair, so that's how we're doing it. All <laughs> you right, keep let's go. score, Danny. One point per, gotcha. per word. Okay, so we got two comics and a retired police officer. Gonna okay. try to spell words that we use all the time to try to impress people. I'm going first. I'm gonna go first. <laughs> the first like word, like five-year-old, is maneuver. Maneuver. Uh, could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Do you really want me to use? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use it in a sentence. Uh, I was driving down the highway and I had to make a defensive maneuver. Why? <laughs> Because some fucking cop was chasing me. <laughs> All right. I Maneuver. saw a car that was just like mine, and I was admiring it. <laughs> All right. Maneuver. Um, M. Come on, guys. Back me up. M. Maneuver. Uh, M-A-N. This is where it gets tough. The uh, Uber part. M-A-N. <laughs> just waiting for you to go. U-E-V-E-R. <laughs> Did you hear? Did you? Did, I just thought it was going to go O O V E R. <laughs> go ahead. It's to you, Joe. Maneuver. M A N. Wait, how did he spell it? All right, he's dead. Uh, just, just <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Hit the buzzer. Oh, wait. Hit wait, the buzzer. Wait. And move M-A-N-U-E-V-E-R. on. M A N U E V E R. Nice. We should make you try to spell cop words like perpetrator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Citation. Little... Go ahead. Uh, maneuver. Um, M-E-N-U-V-E-R. <laughs> How do you spell it? M-E-N. <laughs> maneuver. Man- well, you really got men on you, your you mind. Got you got it wrong with I'm not going to be like Alex Trebek and pretend that I would have gotten it, you know, like I knew all along, because I would have never spelled it correctly. Oh but the correct God. spelling of maneuver is actually M-A-N-E-U. V-E-R. God damn it. I, I, s- let me, I said U-E. Oh, I, did it, I spelled it exactly the same way you did. Moron. All right. Yeah, but at least we, at least we all got it wrong. M-A-N. <laughs> Lou, you were the worst. M-E-N, that was... At least we knew it was singular, Man- not plural. <laughs> Man- Maneuver, <laughs> not menuver. All right. What's next, Danny? Well, let's do a cop word. Okay, let's do a cop word. We'll start with Lou. Everybody, big goose egg on the first one. The word is... Sergeant. Mm, this is a bitch. Yeah, that is a fucking hard Oh, wait, one. I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to have a poker face. I got this. <laughs> I got S-A-R-G-E-A-N-T. That is correct. God damn it. All right. Well, that's not fair. He was a sergeant. So yeah, but there's what? another way to spell it also with an S-E. You know, instead of S-A, so... It's like, all right. you he's know... Up one. He's a guest. Okay, all right, dude, yeah. cut the guy some slack. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wait, you said... Wait, wait, spell it again? <laughs> What did you say? Uh, too, I don't remember what I yeah, said. Yeah, what are you going to do? you take it away from him? Because the other spelling is S. That's the technicality. He got it either way. Yeah. Danny, it's right in front of you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, no, spell the correct no, spelling. Now no, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> All right. Over to Joe. Perpetrator. P-E-R-P-R-E-T-A-T-O-R. <laughs> that was way too many letters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To, to Joe. The word is conscience. Oh, man, these are hard. Conscience, C-O-N-S-C. I like it so far. I-E-N-C-E. That is correct. Yeah. Wow. All right, pressure's oh, on. Joe got one. That's yeah. the bill. Come on, Danny. Just, remember, just remember who doesn't sign your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, what does the winner get, by the way? <laughs> gloating rights? I don't know. <laughs> Bill, the word is minuscule. Oh, you know what? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You've had that reaction to every word. No, matter no I didn't. No, I didn't. Is. I said maneuver. I said, ooh, that's a tough okay. one. Okay. All right. All right. Fair minuscule. enough. Minuscule. You get conscience fucking playing favorites on me here. Minuscule. M. <laughs> minuscule. M I N. <laughs> yeah, I rubbing my, my fucking I got my, my buzzer finger yeah, he's ready. Massaging, <laughs> massaging the fucking button already. All right. I, gotta, I literally have to write this down here. M I N I S C U L E U S. It was U S. See, I'm sound spelling. Minus. Minuscule. There's an us in minuscule, Bill. These are pretty hard work. Well, that that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Well, you were actually supposed to try to spell it. Someone was supposed to. Wow, this is really uh, showing. It's what we're like over here in America. Yeah. Like I had to have a southern accent. Like I'm not really a shithead from the north. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck was that all about? Everybody, so, that, but that's just what you got to do. You know, there's no way to not do that when you talk about how dumb. Yeah, you got to do the more in this country. And it's not just that we text message and we use the computer and everything is becoming abbreviated now. Well, you just hit spell check. You know. But you never learn it. How dumb were those fucking kids the other night at that prom show? Oh, I know they're pretty stupid. I mean, I'm convinced that if God, if God was watching that occur, he would have brought back Passover immediately. He would have been like, like real Passover, where he's like, all the babies will die tonight. You're like, they were the dumbest fucking kids. What happened in Passover? Remember original Passover in the Bible when they like marked the blood on the door and they, the angel of death would come and kill your fucking dude. I gotta read that firstborn book. baby. <laughs> it's <laughs> Revelations, I think. I think. You know, I try to read Revelations. It's about the end of the world. It's like, could they update the English? You know what I'm saying? Like the way they, the way it's written. I, I can't. No, they. I can't. Well, they, you can't update. I mean, it's like saying, can they update Shakespeare? I'm not saying change it. I'm not saying change, but like, can can you write it in layman's terms? Yeah, translate it. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Like the the same way they did the Beowulf. You know, yeah, I guess Beowulf. Yeah, I had to read that in high school. Why yeah, yeah, did you translate it? Somebody fighting. Just watch line, that right? movie, yep. The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. It's back to uh, it's back to Lou. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, Lou. The word is Amateur. convicted rapist. A M A T. I can spell this. E U R. That is correct. Yeah. Jesus yeah, very Christ. Good, and I get Lou. minuscule. Why don't you give him a uh, facetious? Because <laughs> it's not on my list. Very good, Lou. And Billy, you run this. Danny, you run the spelling bee however you want. You don't let Billy poke I'm you just, around. I'm just picking random words. Joe, the word is <laughs> sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, is that one or two words? <laughs> All right, here. Do you want conscience is no walk in the fucking park. That's a tough word to spell. Here, not, Joe. not next to minuscule, okay? Joe, your word is inoculate. Thank you. Okay. Inoculate. I n o c u l a t e. It's correct. God damn it. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck you. You don't even know what Mississippi is. You don't come. Well, I know how to spell a word. What's going to come good. in well, handy maybe, more maybe, maybe as a comedian to... and a writer? What good. would serve me the better purpose? I don't know, Joe. Maybe someday you'll be able to write what fucking state am I in. <laughs> I'll never be, be in Mississippi, so it doesn't matter. Please. And I can spell you Mississippi. You know why? Because you can don't you have spell, a college agent. Can you agent. spell Mississippi, you, Billy? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I can spell Mississippi. Well, who can't? <laughs> like, that is my next word. <laughs> who can't spell Mississippi? It's that fucking thing for when you're a kid. Everybody can spell Mississippi. What thing from when you were a kid? M I S S I S S I P P I. Everybody used to do that when they were a kid. How does it go? M I S S I S S I P P I. Did you have to move your head like that? Yeah. Bouncing along with the music? <laughs> yes, yes. Because I'm a simple, simple man, and I wanted to bounce my head around to my Mississippi song. It brings me a little joy. Is there any way you could just kind of make your visor even more fucking scrunched in? I know, this looks like one of those Amber Crombie Fitch hats that you buy no, that's already ripped. it looks like ripped. you had it in your back pocket and sat on it. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, right, let's go. Next word. This is all just anger because I'm done. I know, it's two okay. Two to nothing. It's okay. Bill? All right. The word is... Go easy. Easy now. Noticeable. Yeah, I'm, I'm never going to get there. <laughs> I know how to spell notice, but once you add the... A bull part is it's like it doesn't fucking does the e what is the ego? 
Uh, yeah, see, that looks bad. What I just wrote does not look right. Notice. <laughs> a bull. <laughs> N-O-T-I-C. Here's the speed bump. Do I take the E out? N-O-T-I-C-E-A-B-L-E. Noticeable. That is correct. Yes, it is. That is yes. correct. I See, you didn't even drunk. know, you asshole. I love it. I love it. I'm breathing down your neck, Rosa. I thought I was drunk. You know what? Let me just say this right Look, now. You have to win this. We can't let a half Egyptian with a I don't think I care. I don't think I care. We're 9-11. <laughs> I don't think I care for Danny's Regis Philbin approach to the way, the way he takes that pause and goes... That oh. is correct. You know, it's it's no, it's it had me on the had me on it's, the it's, it's, it's got to be pseudo exciting for the listeners, too. right? All right, I just wanted to take the cheap shot. Come on, right, he's I'm old sorry. school. He's an old school performer. You give him, you give him a show. <laughs> All right, it's to, uh, it's to Lou, right? It's to Lou. Okay, Lou. The word is occurrence. Ah, he's done on this one. Oh, that's an easy one. C C U R. I would have spelled E N C E. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. There you go. A and C. Well, isn't it rotating now? Doesn't yeah, it joke? Well, now, now you can't. Jumped. Now you can't. It's all right. Just give me a new word. I think we kind of jumped off the rotation. Yeah, we're not doing the rotation. Oh, uh, okay. So new word entirely? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the rotation's not fair because it's like if the guy spells it wrong, you kind of know. Joe, we all agree. Okay. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking over-explaining jackass. <laughs> Bill's anger over start there. Start pontificating. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shitty, competitive. His shitty small town Boston edu- <laughs> education. <laughs> I came from a rough neighborhood in Boston. I didn't. We didn't read. <laughs> Did you just rent Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, I, I just picture you. Yeah, I'm my really father good. laid brick. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the wrench because of because fuck him. All right. The worst part of Goodwill Hunting is when uh, Robin Williams tries to say like how much you benching and Robin Williams goes two seventy. And you look at this little fifty-year-old Jewish guy. It's like, no, you're not. You're not. You're not benching two seventy. You're putting up about seventy. All right, let's go. The next word to Joe. Yes. Is restaurant. Oh, this is that's a good one, man. That's a fucking. I spell this wrong every time. Ah, oh, shut up with the excuses. Go uh, get onto the embarrassment. <clears throat> that's actually restaurant, not restaurant. I'm going to a restaurant. That's how you say it. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> R E Danny Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> that's your male stripper name. You start taking steroids and start dancing. Have one of those little mustaches. <laughs> he doesn't have that anymore, huh? He hasn't had that in a long that's time. What I'm saying you bring it back. I don't like him without the mustache. I like yeah, it's creepy, way. right? Yeah, it doesn't look right. Um, that was like when Tom Selleck shaved his mustache for In and Out for that movie. Was just, it didn't look right. All right, Wayne Newton. Yeah. It's not, you know. Um, all right. Here we go. R- restaurant. R-E-S-T. There you go. Safe. You hit the first rock, Joe. You're going across <laughs> the river. R. Wait, wait, wait. No. There's no, no wait. 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 What's the buzzer? No. I there is no, no wait. You, didn't, I, you can change it if you don't complete the word. There's no wait. Yes. Danny, there's no I wait. I got Look confused for a second. Danny, if you don't hit the... Turn your key. No, that's bullshit. Turn your key. Hit that's the buzzer. That's bullshit. Hit the Steve buzzer. You're out. I wanted to know You're out. what the what the the set in stone rules were. There's no nothing set if in you, stone. If you you can you Lou, you if you, if you don't Lou, finish the word. This is the a dispute here. Come on. Is Lou. that your final Lou. answer? Lou. That's another the whole. Chance. Let's give him another chance. He's a guest, Bill. Go easy on him. Be <laughs> be hospitable. But you're not a guest. No, I'm saying, but, right, but the guest wants me to go again. Go ahead. Do your the little The guest wants over. me to go again. Everybody gets a ribbon. Go ahead, Joe. Can you do it again? see that he gets put into a holding cell with five <laughs> bears? Please. Is that what you call rapists in jail? Bears? Just big, gigantic guys. Oh. All right. Restaurant. R-E-S-T. No, wait. R- U-A-R-A-N-T. Uh, what a, uh, it didn't work. I was like, I got it. And then I saw Danny's face like, why the fuck isn't the bus like working? It. I like how he's just like, son of a bitch. He's faking, he's faking you out. I love it. All right, Joe, you're only up by one. Okay. That fucking word sucks. <laughs> Wait a minute. Bad. So you got two, Lou has two, and I have one? Yep. Let, uh, why don't you let him try to spell restaurant? Because we, we already got rid of that part okay. of it. And I don't well, know how to spell it. How do you it. spell it? How do you spell it? How do you yeah. spell it? The correct spelling is 
to, no one else is spelling this, right? Right. Okay, it's going to be R E S T A U R A N T. Fucking bastard. What, the guy who invented the word? Yep. What was his name? Uh, Charlie Restaurant. Some French guy. <laughs> Bill? Okay. The word is. What is what, what, what are we trying to get to? The first person to three? Because this game is going to go on forever. <laughs> I don't know. Just the first person. Whatever. Whatever. First person to three. I'm getting a little bored with this. <laughs> I think I've, I've, we've established the fact that I'm a moron. I felt like we were just getting the vibe. We're starting to talk shit. <laughs> oh, is that okay? I don't know. We, we were just hitting our groove and he quit the band. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just getting <laughs> to the swing of this catty, cat daddy o. The uh, All right. Sorry. Good. Finally. At least you know when, when to apologize. No. Go ahead. <laughs> the word... The word bill is <laughs> schedule. Schedule. I can spell this. Schedule is. Uh, let's. See. As you pick yes. up a pen and write it out. That's annoying. He's got to write out every word. That's uh, like, S C H E D U L E. Schedule. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. That was a tie game. That was, All a, yeah, that was a fucking layup. Two to two, DeRosa. All right. <laughs> huh? What do your pyramids got to say now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing you as an eight-year-old kid drinking a beer in Boston. Oh, God. Yeah. What a hacky. Really? And I'm picturing you in a fucking toga. What? I wasn't... Which what? is actually Roman. I'm trying to you dress like King Tut. Why are you getting all mean? I wasn't going hacky on that. I was, I was just... I wasn't because even... it upsets you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> your face get all squished Was up. that that hacky? You know, what, you know what it is? I'm sick of you sitting here with your feet up in your 24-ounce Arizona iced tea. <laughs> with like, apple juice in it. Yeah, like you have this body the of water. The drink ever. And, and you can just rest on your laurel. Can I actually get a... You want a water? No, can I get a green tea with apple juice? <laughs> I was I was playing off the pyramid thing. I was going back. I was like going like I was hitting the hacky Joe, ball. I don't guy. care. Go fuck yourself, Bill. It's a competition, Joe. I'll God be nice damn at the end. Dumb of this. Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> so this is to Lou, right? It's over to Lou. Round forty-six. The score is two all. Two all. The word <laughs> is guarantee. Oh Jesus Christ! If you yeah, can't get this one, Lou. You know. G U A R. A N T E E. That is correct. I thought he was going to forget the last E. That was e. good. E. 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 I was going to give him T the buzzer, e. too. E. 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 <laughs> you you almost like... had to put your badge on the table with that one. You sound like a guy trying to lie his way through something. <laughs> yeah. uh, All right, so he's the three uh, first. Now, if uh, if we... This is, the, this is the knockout round. He's the three first... So if you if you miss this one you're out. If I miss this one, Lou wins. But if one of us gets the three, we go into we go into uh, <laughs> overtime, which is a speed round. They just yell out a word, and whoever spells it first wins. All right, all right, Danny, over over to Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa, the word to spell is give him a hard one. Indispensable. Nice, Joe, you're done. Thanks for coming to the tournament. <laughs> <clears throat> He's already clearing the throat. He's nervous. Rubbing his upper lip to get rid of the sweat. The pen is out. Ladies and gentlemen, the pen is out. Joe is writing. <laughs> Look at those effeminate ankle socks that he's wearing. Oh, I can't stop good. looking at that. Those Chris Everett socks. They should have like a little ball in the back of them. <laughs> you look like you're about ready to go play Billie Jean King in a set of doubles. He's not even listening. Look at him. I'm not. I'm concentrating on my word that I need to... I don't like oh, this whole pen and paper correctly. horse shit. Well, fuckface started it, so now we all get to do it. Well, you you, you had the do over. The do over. I said R by accident. Joe, just get uh, the, t the clock is coming down. Come on, quit dragging Shut it out and get uh, rid just get the misery over with. <laughs> do you shave your legs too? <laughs> Jesus, he looks like Ginger or Marianne from the fucking no, no, calf no, down. I don't. I have hair right there. Oh, there it is. Hair. Okay. Yeah, if you go up high enough, you got hair. You're right. What a fag. He doesn't have hairy ankles. No, he has fucking you have. Like, chose for that. No, I'm not talking about hairy ankles. I can see halfway up your fucking calf, Joe. You have you have, you look like you've been wearing like dress socks. Like you used to have a desk job or something like that. You know, it kind of rubs. My brother's like that. He sold health insurance for years. What other socks should I wear with sneakers, Bill? How about some ma male socks? You wear. What am I supposed to wear? Tube socks with fucking red stripes around my thigh. I'm wearing <laughs> can, fucking can, ankle can, socks. <laughs> the fuck am I supposed to wear? 
He wanted to wear pussycat doll socks. No, I don't. I want you to wear socks. Those aren't socks. Lou, you got to admit, little effeminate. They're well, fucking the socks you wear with bit. sneakers. Little effeminate. Joe, just because you yell it doesn't make it right. Now spell your fucking well, me, word. What kind of socks are you wearing? Uh, socks. Let me see them. I got great socks on. Let me see oh. them, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing fucking hey. black ankle socks. <laughs> you fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I forgot what socks I had on. I think, I, I think I'm all right. I didn't even know they made black ankle socks. <laughs> talking about Jordan wore them. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, that makes him cool. Michael Jordan, yeah. Bill Burr. There you go. Spell yeah. your word. Really? All right, Bill. <laughs> you took a long time here, Joe. Shh. Come on, our guest is falling asleep over here, Joe. Let's go. Indispensable. I-N-D-E-S-P-E-N-S-A-B-L-E. Over. Joe, you're out. I'm not out. No, you're out. That's it. No, no, no. I, I got my last chance. Joe, yeah, I know. You, How do Joe, you spell it? for you. Uh... Where is it? You said I N D E S. It's I N D I S. Oh, for fuck's sake! Give me a break. Well, isn't that the whole point of this yeah, little it's competition? Right, Joe. Joe's Joe is out. He gets the big X. Yeah, I like that. Now we're going to. All right, so this is make or break, right? Make or break. I got to hit a three here to stay in the March Madness. Don't worry, Luke. You're gonna be home sleeping in about fucking <laughs> don't eight worry. seconds. <laughs> no, don't worry. Relax. It's okay. Bill, the word is... Be easy. License. Oh, uh, good. Uh, Stick it right up your fucking red-haired ass. Don't you go in your pocket. What? He yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm fucking going for my pen, you cunt. No, you're not. It's behind your ear, he's going, stupid. He's, you know, he's going for his... Uh, oh, my actual he license? He pen behind yeah. your ear. Oh, all right. I got a marker <sighs> here, too. You old man. <laughs> Joe, if you're going to sit there and act like, first of all, you're in better physical condition, we should finish this with a push-up contest, all right, fuckface? We should. I can do 60. How many can you do? 61. <laughs> L-I-S-C-E-N-S-E. -S -E. We're going to overtime. <laughs> I thought I had What's confidence. L-I-C-E-N-C-E. -E. Oh, you know what it is? L-I-S-C-E-N-C-E. You know what it is? It Let me start right. Let me start right. Back in. It's L no. no, you're not back in. After you heard 58, if there's only one other spelling, which is the right way. What L -I -C -E -N -S -E. is it, L-I-C-E-N-S-E. That is correct. That's what I was going to say. Oh, my God. I forgot the N. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, All right. congratulations. Well, Lou. Lou, congratulations. Lou? Lou, Lou, you told us Lou wins story. the spelling bee. We're going to give you an uninformed refrigerator magnet. <laughs> as soon as we get them. As soon as we get them. Bill and Joe are still morons. Yep. <laughs> equally equally morons, morons with disgusting socks on both sides of the racial spectrum. <laughs> you make fun of him for white ankle socks. And then you're I know. Like he took, <laughs> like, it looks like he took dress socks and cut them down to ankles. <laughs> that could, no, you know, you know that what happened? couldn't have worked per more perfectly. This, this is what I ended up, uh, I had like 50,000 pairs of socks, and I was just sick of all the white ones because after a while they're just gray. But yeah, yeah, those he's... socks stink too. That's what I was saying. They're regular socks. <laughs> yeah, they no, look like dirty. Out, like... out of all of ours, I think he has the most manly socks. All right, Lou, put your foot on the table. We got to judge you now, flat foot. What do you got? I hope he's not wearing socks. Oh, <laughs> oh Lou's wearing faded dress socks. <laughs> <laughs> How old are those? <laughs> were they the socks that you were wearing at the end with your uniform that was falling off your yes. body? Yes, they when, were. When yes. you were wearing the, the bag. bag. When I was All right, we're, we're going to go to a break. Lou, thank you so much for coming by. You definitely got to come back. Thank you for having me. I'll definitely come back. You got to tell us some more cop stories and uh, tell us how to get out of tickets and all that stuff. You're listening <laughs> to Uninformed. <laughs> you just heard the hot new track, The Spelling Beat. Up next, another street classic, DJ Bernard Valentine's remix of Who's Gonna Keep You Out of Heaven. Yay! On and on. All right, here's the deal. We were uh, before we went to break. We were talking about uh, what's the one thing that's gonna keep you out of heaven. And we got we got a lot of people doing a bunch of fucked up shit to animals. Um, is there Danny? Is there any way we can go to some of these people? Yeah. This guy says as a teen. That's uh. Girls we got underdog. Sleep. Underdog. What's up, man? Not much. Just driving along. All right, man. We got to hear this. He says as a young teen, you fuck girls in their sleep. Yeah. Yeah, my sister used to have sleepovers all the time, and me being the younger brother would always make nice chocolate milkshakes for everybody. And I looked up Seroquel, which is a very potent uh -huh. sleeping pill. We have a win. In, <laughs> in the 
milkshakes, and then once they all fell asleep, I'd have my fun. Bouncing, bouncing around from girl to girl. How, how old were you? I, I was 13. How old were they? Uh, my sister was two years older, so 15. You, so, this, went on, this, so, this went on for, oh, about three or four years. Didn't these girls, you know, it must have been real confusing with that. I've never done it before. And this, <laughs> Where do you get this, Sarah Quill, from? <laughs> My grandmother, she was uh, she liked taking her sleeping pills at night. Didn't the girls realize when all of a sudden they wanted to pass out for no reason that something was afoot? Well, I like <laughs> yeah. this guy. This guy's so old school. He, he he's like he's like he's before date rape drug. Right, right, yeah. He's like you know I'm so sick of coming up with a line. It's, yeah. You know it's not working uh, with these fourth graders. I I, I feel like Jesus. I, there's got to be a way. How many girls did you do this to? <laughs> there was. Oh, probably four or five altogether. Four or five? Over, over the course of how long? Well, my sister was friends with these girls for years. Mm -hmm. So you had a, you had like four or five of them that you were consistently banging. First of all, they're 15 and you're making them chocolate shakes? I mean, uh, were they retarded? <laughs> <laughs> they sound like they were coming in for the shakes. <laughs> Did you make them silly no, hats? <laughs> no, you know, we all sit around and get high, smoke a pot, and then everybody oh. wants to uh -huh. so, so, Dude, you are at, at any point, did you ever have sex with a woman while they were conscious, or is... is this, oh, yeah, I do now that I'm, just, I'm older. This way. <laughs> I was a perverted 13-year-old yeah. yeah, you know? Yeah, now, now just yeah, rape from regular. Yeah, you're just, uh, <laughs> you're basically, yeah, you, you were uh, like a serial raper and poisoner. Basically. Jesus Christ. Dude, you're so fucking evil. Right now, the devil is sweating for his job. Yeah. Oh, He's like, Keep on. You know what? That's this guy pretty, gets, it's pretty awful. Awesome. This, this guy gets to the corner office. Like, you don't even get punished. It's just yeah. like, this guy's got a lot of ideas, man. He's, he's a, you, become, you get so evil, you become a made guy. Yeah. I like where your head's at, kid. Right, you, you know what? Office company Nobody... Car. Nobody is gonna top that one. We we, we right, got we got a winner it. there. We got a winner. All right, that's All and, right. Uh, that's a. Uh, if they let us do this again, there, Joe, I think that one's a winner. That's I like great. that. It's a little confessional. That guy goes to hell before Jeez, anybody else. That was the perfect else. one to end on, actually. Yeah, yeah that was the <laughs> show stuff. I wonder when he first actually. It was like, like when he actually had consensual sex, he was probably like nervous, like they're like this is so new to me, like you're yeah. awake. <laughs> he probably you're said a bunch of crazy shit, and the girl was like, "What are you talking about?" Because he just says God knows what to unconscious little girls. <laughs> really, really upset you know, by you, that you call. Know, really upset. Let's hear some other stuff. I thought somebody was gonna say I fucked somebody's wife or some shit like that. No, we might. Uh, what do we got here? We uh, what happened? What happened, Danny? Uh, well, the call I really wanted to go to, I guess, couldn't hang on. Oh, uh, that, that guy, he's got it. All right, well. All right, well, let's go to Kevin in Wyoming. What's up, Kevin? Thanks. I guess we're not going to Kevin in Wyoming. <laughs> what was that noise? That was him hanging up. That was him. Oh, that was him, like, stuff. freaking out, going, oh, my God, they're going to go to me. Oh, okay. And he couldn't handle it. All right, let's go to Dave in Jersey. What's up, man? Hey, I was just talking about the uh, dog that he hit. I'm a truck driver, man. You got to hit those fucking things if they're, if they're in your way. <laughs> and the last thing you want to do is tell the family because they're just gonna they're just gonna call the cops on your truck. So can you be my uh, lawyer? When I die, can you commit suicide and then you know just <laughs> stick up for me up there? <laughs> down, man, hey, listen, man. Fuck you. You went around it, man. What 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 did you do? What, what's gonna keep you out? Yeah. Dude, he's just... All right, I think he, he's listening to himself. Turn your right, radio, turn your CD down. Right, no. He's breaking. Jesus Jesus Christ. What did that guy do? He's a truck driver. Enough said. You know how many tranny rim jobs he's gotten in some fucking. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, but that's her job. <laughs> it's a job. It's a consensual transaction. It's not legal. But you know what I'm saying? No, I went for the joke. You got to take all the steam out of it. I just was trying to be funny for a second. Oh yeah, I'm real bitter over here. I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm trying to help you out here. What? <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay, people, for the love of God, can you fucking? I, I don't, Joe, you know what? Why don't you introduce the topic? Because every time I tell these people to call in, no well, one, the oh, topic, oh. the thing that I'm very curious about is, uh, oh, Jesus, is if if you're gonna die, we talked about this. If you die, 
What would your prayer be? What would the thing that you say? I want these people. I want to hear these people's story. Like, oh, I thought you were saying no, no, you want no, to switch no, no, gears. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was saying, uh, yeah. Well, right, listen, we're call, we're taking calls. This is what we're taking calls for. We want to know what thing you did in your life, the one ultimate awful evil thing that's going to keep you out of heaven when you get interviewed by God when you get there, if it exists. So who's got something? Call us up. I think the whole idea of heaven and hell are so absurd. Jesus, you're know, you just adding to the kitten story right here. You know. Or a ship that's going to keep you out. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're going to do something, you do it right. You know, I'm not going to pussyfoot. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say to God. I didn't pussyfoot around with you. I you told know, you how I felt. Just that pun, you should go to hell. <laughs> All right, what do you got, Dan? All right, Daryl in California, you got a story? Yeah, I got one. <clears throat> first of all, you don't mind if I play along and actually stay on topic. Yeah, that would be uh, great. Thank first, you. First guy tonight. Well, okay, you, you fucking retards. When they ask a the question, call up and, and answer it. That's anyway, right. here's mine. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, dating my, uh, I'm, I'm like you guys, I sort of dated out of my race, I'm a white guy, and I dated a Mexican, I married her, and her brother just wouldn't stop fucking with us and everything, so, I ended up calling immigration on him and had him deported. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Let, let's, let's get back to them fucking with you, what, what were they doing? Just, you know, always, you know, every, you know, I couldn't. I could never go over to her house because they always talk shit about me. You know, I make a pretty decent living and stuff like that. But you know, you know, I'm a typical, typical one eight pet. You know, I'm a fat fuck, so you know, they always, they always bitch about that. They're always bitching about just what you know. I don't treat her well enough that she doesn't get to you know have more of the decision and stuff. But just like bullshit things. So let me you know? ask you this: they never, me- they, they never came to you like you're a white guy with my Mexican sister. They just attacked you for your weight and you. Had them sent out yeah, of the country. No, it never had anything to do with it. Never had anything to do with the white thing, you know. And this one brother, though, he would just never, you know. Then he'd get drunk, and I go over there, and he'd, and he'd like try and like hug me, and you know, grab my grab my fucking ass, and then you know, I'm just like, you know. <laughs> and your man. You know, and then we had a kid. You know, then we had a kid. <laughs> and then he's going great. Cause this guy would just, you know, never never stop. So he was illegal. I, I knew he was working, and I, you know, I called immigration. And, you know, I love this. Right. What he's going to be saying to God? Right. And I go over there, you know, and he's <laughs> grabbing my ass and he's, he's feeling my tits. You know, it's like it's not like I put him out in the ocean. He was he was still on land. Well, let me ask you this, dude. At what point did you decide, like, oh yeah, motherfucker, you got? Did you ever? Oh, well, did, well, you know what? I mean, it, it, it took me about a year because I mean, I you know, I always played it off my head. I recently saw you on stage, and you're you're always you know. I know part of you know one of the things you talk about is that that you know that. Just want to walk up to somebody, and just you know, you you think these evil thoughts, you never think you'll go through with it. But I was just for like a year, I was thinking this evil thought, and then I just it had it, you know. And I just said, you know, I, I can't remember what the exact is. It was just, you know, it was probably something small, but it was just one of those. Yeah, you know, what did he do? You know, tickle you under your chin? <laughs> <laughs> what did he tickle you under the under your chin? Your double chin? Which chin did he tickle? Where you were just like, all right, fuck this. That's a good he one, dude. A, he gave my nipple a tweak. Wow. Yeah, that that a good does, one. does your wife know? Uh, oh no, no. I, this is this is like confessional, man. This is. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Fuck anybody. that. I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? I crossed yeah, the line. Yeah. This is like. Uh, yeah. I didn't even use my real name. All right, brother. I'll, I'll see you in hell. Oh, hey, I got one more thing. What? Uh, 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 Billy, did you ever take? I saw you in Ontario. Did you ever take out that Christmas tree? No, I didn't. But thanks for bringing up a reference only you and I would know. All right. <laughs> thanks. But you know what? You played along the whole time and you fucked it up in the end. Hey, man. Thanks for calling. All right. Let's go to somebody else. All right. Uh, let's go to Ross and PA. All right, Ross. Ross. We're hearing what's the one thing you did that's going to keep you out of heaven. Ross, you're on the air, dude. Yo, oh, sorry. Hey, um, I can't be getting someone deported, but does killing a friend's rabbit keep you out of heaven? Jesus, <laughs> a lot of animal shit. A lot yeah, of animal what shit. What did you do? What did you do? Um, uh, my buddy has like three acres of land, and he had about six pet rabbits, not panned or nothing. I hit it with my motorcycle, killed it, got off the bike, looked at the door, thought about going to tell him, got on the bike, and took off. Yeah. Well, let me, I went over to his house a week later and like, oh, someone ran my rabbit over. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Hey, you, you, you didn't do it on purpose, though, right? 
No, no. All right, and, uh, uh, that's great, dude. And you probably got that good, perfect murder feeling when he said that, like you got away with it. That had to be <laughs> actually pretty satisfying. Yeah, I but, did uh, it. I, I pulled it off. So I know. Is yeah. it like the telltale heart, though? <laughs> a couple of veterinarians come over and you hear that rabbit under yeah. your floorboard. He keeps seeing carrots everywhere. What's for dinner? Carrots? This is chicken. Yeah, One day carrots. he just flips out. All right, I did it. <laughs> it was me. I killed the rabbit. All right, cool, man. I, I think you might be all right on that one. It's just a yeah, fucking rabbit. There's a million of them. Yeah, rabbits are kind of cunts, you know? <laughs> you know. What percentage, Joe? Yeah, all of them. They're all kind of... They're all kinda, I had a pet really? rabbit. They, they, it was a real dick. It used to bite me all the time. You know, they're, just, they're shitty. They're not They're not good pets. I would go with like 87... What, what percentage of rabbits would you say are cunts? 87? No, I'd say all of them. I all like of them? them. They're just yeah, 100%. big rats with big ears. And they don't taste that good either. Your house. You had rabbit before? All right, you know yeah. what? That that guy's making it to heaven. All right, yeah. fuck it. Next time. the clear, him. buddy. Let's hear it. Adam, Indiana. What's keeping you out of heaven? Hey, Bill, first of all, you're my favorite comedian. Thank uh, you very but much. I have not told anybody this. Uh, the only other person that knows this is uh, the buddy that was with me. But uh, we found a dead deer. Uh, it was over a fence. I don't know how I got there. But Please uh, say that you fucked it. Please. <laughs> Please. That's where you were going. <laughs> I was well, saying, man, uh, it's already dead. No, uh, That's the only that thing left to do to it. <laughs> that might not be as bad. We uh, decided to cut the head off of it and uh, put it on this girl's doorstep that we didn't like. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, man, that's kind of, uh, that's a little high school prank. Yeah, you'll, you'll go to heaven. You're all right. I you're like right. it, though, to, to get through the act of cutting off the fuck. Dude, cutting off a head isn't yeah. fucking easy. You know what I mean? Well, that that took... I, you know what? I, 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 How many I will heads say did you that, cut but, off? But it, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I just sounded like a real fucking that. psychopath. <laughs> I felt bad about that for the last that, 12 years. Well, let me ask you. Why Why did you do it to this girl? Let's get into the pain of this. Was this the girl that you well, know? It, the pain really came from him because uh, she broke up with him and she told him he was an ass or whatever. And so I said, hey, let's cut the fucking head off and stick it on her doorstep. You're just being a good friend. Well, first of all, what the <laughs> fucking state do you live in that this is uh, well, that this is just readily available? How are we going to get her well, back? Are yeah, uh, we going to steal her iPod? No, let's cut the ass off a boar and stick it in their chandelier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's Midwest state. Yeah, you know what? You I'm go it. I'm going over to Bill's side on this. I don't think that that's that bad. I yeah. think I think you're a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, if things go south in my relationship, uh, I might be giving I you think, a call. <laughs> I think Jesus would understand that. I think Jesus would be like, yeah, we did that for Mark once. He. Uh... <laughs> I wish somebody did me a solid when I was hanging up there. <laughs> this guy probably would have cut the cross down. All right, he's fucking in. All right, man, that's two guys in a row. I think you're going to heaven. Come on, somebody's got to right, be out there. Oh, Thanks, man. Thank you. Somebody fucked their brother's wife. Somebody yeah, did something. Right here. This oh, is it. Here, here we, we go. Here we go. Jeff in Long Island. The bit killer. <laughs> Evil landslide. Oh, Jeff, Long Island. You're on the air. Dude, go. Dude, all the good... Uh, this Jeff. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Hi, hey. Jeff. No shit. Jeff, hey. let's, let's hear it, man. What, what's keeping you out of heaven? I fucked my wife's mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Stop lying. You ain't stop. Hey, dude, you ain't stop lying. Don't say that. Wow. No, no, say no, no, it no, again. How she had all say, the... say it again. You did what? I, I fucked my wife's mother. Dude, you are fucking awesome. She must have been hot. <laughs> dude, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. We, we, we oh. want to hear. I want to hear this whole fucking story, how this went down. How did it go down? Starting with how, how old she were... was. Yes. How old was she? Yeah. yeah. Please say She's 70. like 55. Uh, yeah. And how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26. Yeah. And yeah. this happened this year, or, or was it? No, it, it was like two years ago. It sounds like I a Shannon ever, Tweed I... movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, skin of ass. <laughs> how, how, how old I was it? over there, and they were having a little party, all her mother's friends. That's how And they were bringing up people they think they could do. I was over there doing like a side job, doing the plumbing work. People, <laughs> that sounds like a porno. Uh, yeah. just, no, it didn't happen then. I was job. delivering a pizza. <laughs> My buddy's cleaning the pool. <laughs> at, what, at what point did Billy Zane come in? <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Sorry, dude. Go ahead. Okay. After all that, I heard them bring up my name. So I went home, and I was thinking about it and all, and I told my wife, 
three days after that, I said, I got to go over there. I forgot to put a, a shutoff valve on. So I went over there, and that's what an what excuse. I like it. <laughs> Is that even the old, the old shut, shut up now? Yeah. Oh, you better go fix it. Is that a real yeah. term? Yeah. Yeah, she's got a busted <laughs> aspirator too, and uh, it just came in. It's just called a shut-off valve. They couldn't think of a bit, wow. like a, a closure pipe or something right, like that. Let's, let's, so, let's, all right, go ahead, go ahead. So that's when it happened. Oh well, tell us yeah, how it Jesus. happened. So you show up, you're wearing your onesie. Zip <laughs> or just a tool belt. <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing that Fonzie mechanic zip up, <laughs> holding it. Holding I made, it, holding I, it I made sure the plumber, plumber's crack was showing. <laughs> right. So what 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 did you say? You she opens the door. Are you feeling a sex vibe? Are you putting out your vibe? What's going on? Well, I, I wanted to do it, and I I heard her bring it up that night. So I was doing like little things. I kept coming in and out of the house and walking by her and all. Then I went into the... Uh, her How are you walking by her? You yeah. seductress, you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I kept coming in and out of the house. I'm walking by her like, like a street cop. You know, <laughs> I drink a glass of water. Little things to get her riled up. <laughs> but Jeff, you, you should write a book, man. This is really... You went tips. So she says your name. Oh, you go back. Christ. You go back to the house to try and and, and finish the, the the job. And isn't she surprised to see you back there? Because obviously there was no more work to be done. No, I told her that there was a shut off valve that needs to be added in you her were bathroom, pussy. bathroom, right from her bedroom. So she came back, and I told her that I heard them talking, and she she was at all. And that's when it happened. She was at all or in awe? What are you saying? <laughs> at all. That, uh, that I heard everything that what's happened. What's this guy's name? That they were talking about. This is Jeff. From where? Waldorf, <laughs> Maryland. Come on. Jeff, we're, 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 we're getting Jeff right only right. somebody from Bumblefuck, Maryland could fuck up a story this cool. How is this? This story <laughs> stinks. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> It's cool, but, but he, you know what? He's letting us fill in all the blanks. It's yeah. like, I said I overheard it, and she said, okay, and then we did it. No, fuck that. How were you talking to her? What did you say? So yeah. I heard uh, your little conversation, and... I said, I heard, heard what y'all were talking about at the party, and you think that you could get me? I said, well, I'm here. And that's when it happened. What? Is what? Ha tell I mean, us. the music wasn't said. I didn't pour a glass of champagne, or I didn't wow her. Well, she's fifty-five. She should be happy even looking at her. But this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, cold, this Bill. <laughs> your wife's your wife's mother oh. fucked you behind your wife's back. She really did that. Yes. You're huh. going to heaven. She's going to hell. Let me ask you this though. Uh, really? <laughs> let, let me ask you this though. Uh, how many people live in your town? A lot. A lot, and you can just come with that gruff kind of. Let me tell you, it's I heard dark. you thought you could it's get very with dark me. In my town. It's very what? It's very dark. What are you saying? There's a lot of black people there. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> Jeff. What the from, fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so you are so sticking with your own race that you're gonna yeah. grab a shut off valve and fuck the 55 year old mother of your wife? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Wow, you, you are going to hell, Jeff. You're a real piece of shit. <laughs> That's gonna be like you ever, you ever see like when, when Donald he, gets, he literally just goes, "Oh come on, man! Don't, <laughs> don't you make me it? feel bad about fucking my wife's mom behind her back." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Dude? I'm keeping it in the family. Well, <laughs> That's what you've been doing Christ. for years. Yeah. Mean, look, <laughs> you got to give it up to the guy, okay? It, it's fucking evil, but there's some sort of fucked up Hall of Fame. He just went into. All right. We got time for one more? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the call, Jeff. Easy, man. All right, man. See you, buddy. Uh, Jesus you think Christ. he goes to hell? He what? You think he goes to hell for that? I think he go to purgatory. Dude, while that's they a... decide, like, what the fuck I is don't know. That? Part of me thinks God would be like, uh, how can you not? <laughs> you know, like... I mean, especially if your wife is hot. That's what I'm saying. And then you got to... If your wife is a dime, right? And then you see your mother, and it's like, whoa, okay, that's where that fucking dime came from. You know, like, and her plus, mom when, is rocking. When, when people talk shit... You know, they got to back it up, you know? It's just it's exactly. like, it's like talking trash. <laughs> I could get well, with them, or you think so? Oh, do, yeah? Do something special. <laughs> let's go, close let's with go, it. Let's go, Grandma. <laughs> Show me something. All right, let's... Uh, let's, let's close to the real evil one. Let's talk to let's talk to Grizzly in Yonkers. Grizzly, what's up? Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, Grizzly. Hey, I, 
If there's hell, I'm definitely going to it. I fucked up bad. When I was younger, I worked as sacristan for my church. I collected the collection, and uh, pretty much every week, grabbed a couple bucks out of it. A couple hundred here, a couple hundred there. It was pretty oh, fucking God. bad. That's it? You ain't going to hell for that. Come on, man. Do Unless you, want... you follow that with, and then I put it in an altar boy's asshole before I fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> then you go right? to hell. <laughs> hey, your story stinks. <laughs> well, that makes me feel better. Wait, wait a minute. What, what, <laughs> here's a loophole, though. What did you use the money for? Well, mostly drugs. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> the church is getting more money. We're, we're getting. Come on, you gotta, you gotta throw. Did you sell them to children? No, no. I was just, ah, dude, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Oh, the church is enough money. They deserve to get a little bit ripped off here and there. They're doing yeah, fine. You're fine. I, I did get, I did get caught once, and that kind of sucked. So, I so you already back. got caught. You already paid your penance. What'd you're you fine. have to do to get out of it? <laughs> Not much. The guy, the uh, the priest Five is pretty Mary's? cool, but the next week I stole. Not much is a hand Who's job. From the Catholic <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, All right. Let's, Thanks, All right. guys. All right, Keith. Uh, Keith get, the let's trucker. Get, let's get a good one to uh, end here. Right, hopefully, this one will be good. Keith, what do we got here? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say first off, I really don't carry any guilt for this because of the shit that my old ladies put me through. But uh, she had about a uh, dozen times or so screwed around on me while we were dating before we got married. Mm -hmm. And leading up to my marriage, there was somebody she was screwing around with, so I decided to have one last fling. Well, we got married. I had dumped the girl a couple of days prior. Uh, coming back from our honeymoon, I couldn't account for my old lady's whereabouts after work. I assumed she went back and fucked the guy she was screwing uh, from before we got married. So you know, the next goddamn day, I got awful. home. Yeah, the next day I got a hold of my ex-girlfriend, went over, and I fucked my ex-girlfriend. Two days, basically two days after I uh, said my vows. But my old lady's fucked around seven times since we've been married, so... Yeah, so what's I'd going have to on? say she got me Dude, back. Why, why, if you knew your girl was fucking around continually, yeah. why would you marry her? This is like I, a Dr. Phil honest, guess. I've asked myself that question. I've, we've been together for 20 years, 17 of it married, and I still, my buddies don't understand it. I don't understand. The I really don't great. know why I've stuck with mm -hmm. her. Sex is I love great. her, mm -hmm. but I hate her. That was a letdown, though. I, you, you, dude, you were talking with such intensity. I, that's why I said, this, you know, this guy I did something say awful. Kill somebody. Yeah, <laughs> he was saying it like that. So I marched my fucking ass right to the store. I bought a goddamn gun. I waited you know, to get my fucking perm. You know, killed like, the guy. He was yeah. fucking. We should have exaggerated our shit. So you know what I mean? Just to make everybody feel like comfortable. Like I saw this guy's fucking leg off. All right. You know. All right. Thanks, Keith. Hopefully, let's try to. And I think from what it looks like on the screen here, this could be the showstopper. So let's uh -oh. let's see what we got. Sam in Compton. Oh, shit. Sam. I'll put yeah. there. What's oh. up, bro? What do you got, man? Uh, okay. What's keeping well, you out of heaven? I'm fucking nervous right now, right? So, I've never told anyone this before. All right, let's hear it. But, all right, I was seven at the time. Let me just say that right now. Okay. And uh, I kind of would fuck around with uh, <clears throat> my niece, and she was six. I would, like, feel her up and uh, okay. kiss her and go <laughs> down on her, stuff like that. Was she resisting? No. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems that you're both That's underage. Fine. I think it cancels each other out. It's now pedophilia. It's cousins, two potential pedophilia victims. <laughs> going at it. <laughs> I can't do the math on that one. Yeah. I mean, if if she's not old enough to know that she shouldn't be doing, I mean, a year later, do you know you're not supposed to be with a six year old? When I was in kindergarten, I used to look up the the dresses of the other girls. I, I think he's yeah. more freaked out that it's his niece. But, dude, I, I know cousins oh, I that do that. that shit all the time. People, I know a ton oh. of people that go, yeah, I, I know a guy that fucked his cousin when he was, like, 16. Joe, just just admit it. No, it wasn't me. I would tell you. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, know, I know this guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a friend. This guy's got all these details. <laughs> yeah, she would always wear this fucking... No, up, no, Charlie's Angel style. <laughs> but I mean, that guy was like he—he he well knew it was wrong, and he—I don't think that that's that bad. Well, well I guess the bottom good. line is that uh, Greer, Bill, and myself will be occupying hell by ourselves. Um, I no, mean, he, he, no, li he lit I'm, it on I'm fire. I'm in hell by myself. Y'all, y'all fine. That shit y'all did is nothing. Y'all fine. Now I got other shit that. Uh, really? <laughs> All right, listen. You, you, uh, 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 we we got to take a break two? here. <laughs> We're listening. To, you're listening to uh, Uninformed with Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. 
And that concludes this special ass edition of Uninformed. Uninformed. The Uninformed Mixtape, Volume 1. Blam! Tune in next month when Bill and Joe be back with a brand new motherfucking live ass episode. Then you stupid bitches can start calling in again. Till then, you cocksuckers can visit www.myspace.com slash uninformed radio. Also, be sure to peep myspace.com slash Bill Burr and myspace.com slash Joe DeRosa. My name is Bernard Valentine from the world's filthiest sex rap group, Deep. If you a sex nasty motherfucker like me, you can go peep my shit on myspace.com slash deep music. Hey, motherfuckers, it's been fun. And as they say, I'm Peter Boy on this motherfucker, which means I'm out. All right, well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.